All right, about to get started. Matt Perry, a poker pro out of Rochester, New York, is the chip leader with 9.1 million. Greg Weber in second chip position with close to 7 million. And over 1,100 entries generated a prize pool, but 3.6 million first place, taking home $790,000. Second, 471. Sixth place, the worst case scenario, 161,000. The Andes are 10,000, blinds are 40 and 80. Thomas Paul going out, and now Cliff Josephy. Cliff is kind of a legend in the poker community, especially for the online players. A lot of us learn coming up from his training site. He's just been a guy who's had great results and been around the scene for 20 years now. It's awesome to see him continue his success here on the WPT. Ace seven of clubs will bump it up to 180 to go. G. Lu also out. Now it's on to the firefighter. Second chip position has an attractive ace jack of spades and he will continue with a call and we're gonna see a flop. I like that Greg called here. I think if he three bets, it's a little awkward with Cliff being so short. He'd probably have to call a shove and not really love it. Instead, he just flops top top here and it's so disguised. Jack six deuce, he has jacks, he checks it, but Josephy smart checks behind him. Turned card's a seven that hits Josephy. Yeah, that's a rough card for Cliff there. It's essentially impossible to fold on the turn if Greg bets. Greg has bet 225 here and Josephy He's thinking about it, but you're right. He has to make this call. Down to the river we go. Let's see if Joseph, he could suck out. No, do some diamonds. That's a bad card for Cliff as well, because if Greg was drawing with something like 8-9 or 8-5, he's whiffed. Greg could even bet a worse 7 here and just think, okay, let's bet small, get the showdown. He is going to bet 425. Joseph, he with an insta call. So there you go, Greg Weber starting out. The nice position, there's his mother and father. He's 27 years old. And he's not a full-time player, so this is really exciting for him and his family, getting them to watch him play for so much money. Matt Perry, he's a chess player, top juvenile chess player, well-respected in the poker world, he quickly folds. And now Gia Lu with ace three of diamonds will raise. Greg out. Thomas Paul picking up kings. Thomas Paul, I expect to be a thoughtful player. I mean, he's an ex-hedge fund manager. He was part of the MIT Blackjack team. He's not a full-time poker pro, but I expect him to play well and think about the game. 480,000. Who needs to think? You got a pair of kings. You pop it up. You notice his hand shook a little bit there as he put the money out. And if you watch a lot of live poker, you realize that typically happens when people are strong. 1,950,000. But over the top, Gia doesn't believe him. He's going to raise it to over a million. I got to say, Vince, I like the play. We know staring at Thomas's kings, this is not going to work out for Gia. But if you're going to make a move like this, using one of the weak suited aces is an ideal hand. He obviously didn't see the shaking hand. And now, Come on, then. right over the top, Thomas says, I wasn't kidding around. Gia, tail between his legs here, going, oh, what the heck did I just do? trying to make it seem like he had a little bit of a decision, but we know he had a three in his bye hand. Bye-bye, Gia. Good attempt, but Thomas Paul taking a big one down with a quality hand. He's 46 years old. Now, he's a retired fund manager, a former bond trader for Goldman Sachs. Yeah, and I know it didn't work, Vince, but I like where Gia's head was at. And that tells me that he came to play today and is comfortable taking risks, because it's early in the final table and you see him making light four bets. And that is not something that a casual but passive player would do early in a final table. Greg Weber now looking down at a little pair of nines. Well, he is going to raise this with the nines, makes it 180. But Thomas Paul with ace king right behind him. just gonna call the ace king i like this i think that he and greg are both really deep greg's oh not boy. likely to get out of line but oh my goodness cliff josephy what a time to get the pair of aces you got two suckers in there on your right yeah well either greg or thomas is about to lose a bunch of chips because they both have really strong hands and i would be so shocked if they both found a fold when cliff pops it Action clock ticking down there on Cliff as he decides his action. Now he will not go all in. He makes it 640, so he wants to get some value out of the aces. 640, 
folding behind him. A little over two million. Back to Greg Weber with the nines. This is a tough one for Greg. One thing for sure, he could take the heat. You get it? The heat, the fireman. I was so focused on the hand, I just completely missed that gold. It's gonna be a long night. <laughs> The action clock is ticking away on Greg. Action clock does allow 30 seconds for each decision, but if you need an additional 30 seconds, each player begins the final table with eight time bank shifts. Nice fold there, Greg. Thomas is stuck, though. I'm all in. I call. All in and cold. There's really nothing he can do. Sometimes you get cooler in spots like this. Could use some red cards. Stop. Stop. I had a big one, too. Barring catastrophe, Cliff Josephy is going to double up here and be in good shape to make a run at his first WPT title. Flop is at 873. That's a good flop. That's a very good flop for me. I like that flop. Got a 1 in 24, 50 chance, I think. I believe you. Thomas Paul is actually drawing dead. Gia Lu had a king. So did Matt Parry. So this is over. Nice. Four diamonds. Last card doesn't matter. Cliff Josephy, the family man from Muttontown, New York. You got your red card. Oh, one diamond short. 51 years old. Got to double up in a big fun. way. We're just getting started here at the Brigada Poker Open. We're coming back for more. We're giving away $600,000. There's no better value in the month of March than tournaments on WPT Global. We're doing a 100% rake back promotion where all tournament rake will go into three tiers of free rolls with increasingly bigger rewards. Qualify when you play and spend money in MTTs from March 4th to March 31st. Want some extra help? Deposit using the promo code YT52 and get our welcome bonus with Deposit Match. Gia now. Ace four offsuit. I'm gonna let that one go. Now Greg Weber wants no part of that. Thomas Paul taking a break now. Cliff Josephy. Cliff raising king five in the small blind into goo. The 9-8 in the big blind is currently our short stack. As we said at the top of the show, Goo is a wild card, and we don't really know what to expect from him. So maybe he's folding his big blind way too much, and Cliff is attacking that. Cool. He doesn't play that much poker, but he is making the call here. He actually owns a restaurant in Jersey, a Chinese restaurant. Well, he's going to own a chain of restaurants if he takes this thing down. Mm-hmm. Flops at ace, ace three. And this is a great flop texture to bet small on. And you see Cliff fire 80,000 into 500,000. And that's because he knows that Goo is not that likely to have an ace. And if he doesn't have an ace, it's hard to continue. So he doesn't bother using a large bet. Well, Goo hit none of that, but that doesn't matter. He is going to take a raise. Wow. I do like this from Goo because he's fighting for pots and he knows his opponent isn't representing much. The problem is he's not representing oh, much. Wow. Cliff recognizes that and shoots right back over the top of him. This is really cool. He sees through it. He's saying, listen, I don't believe if you had an ace, you're going to raise me at that point. Great psychology. So he comes back over the top, and now Goo probably has to say goodbye. And he does so. Wow. You're at the top of your game today, Vince. <laughs> I don't know. Cliff on the top of his game as well. Three betting people with king high and right about it. Should have showed the jack 10. Would have been good for the game. Greg Weber in second chip position. Greg out. All right, a bunch of folds. Goo has raised this with his king four. I like his aggression. And Matt here with queen nine suited in the small blind is probably looking to three bet. He might call, but against Goo. He's going to 480. 
1.1. And Gia very quickly from the big with ace jack suited four bets. And I love this play from Gia. I think this is great. Goes out and now Matt Perry saying, what did I do? I didn't see him. I have to go away too. Gia Lu gets them to fold the hands. Now in the audience is Simon Lamb, his buddy. And Simon, no stranger to final tables at the Borgata. Tonight, merely an observer instead of a player. Gia Lu playing some good poker here tonight. Yeah, he's playing some very solid poker tonight. I like that he cold four bet that ace jack suited. A lot of players would cold call or just fold in that position. Gia thus far has been comfortable taking the more risky option available to him. Josephy has a very interesting eight seven of diamonds, likes it, makes it 180 with that hand into Goo. He's got ace seven. Goes out, Matt Perry. Professional player living in Vegas now. Goes away, and now G has the real hand. Pair of jacks. And he's just calling, which is surprising to me. I mean, he's really created an image with those two four bets so far of an aggressive preflop player. Having jacks in the small blind here seems like a good opportunity to put more money in the pot with that image. I'm not really sure why he's calling. You got Greg Weber, the firefighter, to stick around, and the flop is at ace nine six. Very intriguing flop. Middle pair for Greg, open ender plus a backdoor flush draw for Cliff, and a pair under the ace for Gia. Cliff Joseph raised before the flop will make the continuation bet of two forty. Gia has to be disappointed with the ace popping up there, but he is in front of this point, makes the call. And Greg has a piece of that. This would be an easier fold for Greg if he had jack nine, but because he has nine eight, he's also trying to factor in whether he should peel with the backdoor straight draw. But he makes the right decision, does get away here. So here we go. It's an eight, so that gives Josephy a pair plus the open ended. Gia checks. And Josephy also checking down to the river we go. And a seven. Cliff has two pair. Um, I don't know why she is betting here. He bets 400K into a million, and if I had to guess, his intention is to bluff because he can't really get called by a worse hand. So I believe he's trying to make Cliff fold something like a weak ace. This is a little awkward. And he's got to lay the two pair down. Wow, and I guess Cliff was just convinced that his opponent either had the flush or a straight and was forced to fold his two pair. That's, uh, that's a big bluff from Gia there. All right, we move on. Matt Perry, chip leader with a beautiful ace king. He'll make it 180 to go into Gia, who has a pair of tens here. I said earlier I was surprised that Gia just called with jacks in the small blind. I do like his call with tens here. The positions are different, and he's in third place while Matt is in first, so he's really disincentivized from playing a big pot unnecessarily against someone who could knock him out. Greg with a 9-10 suited calling, and now a couple folds behind him. Goo's gonna call. Sloppy call, four-way action. What the heck? And we're gonna see the flop. Queen seven four. Not much for anyone here. So Gia in the lead. Matt, everybody checking into Gia. He decides to check and I'm pretty good with that. There is an overcard out there. It's a four way pot. Again, he doesn't really wanna play a big pot here with a marginal hand. Mm -hmm, five on the turn. Now that's good for Goo. Open ended now and he will check it. Matt Perry, beautiful ace king, nothing materializing, but he says, I'm gonna try to steal this right now, half a million. Matt's not necessarily representing a lot with this bet, but he's just picking up on the fact that his opponents are playing kind of straightforward right now, and if anybody had anything good, they probably would have bet the flop, so he's just going for it and assuming that his chip lead and his aggression are gonna carry him through here. Man, but Goo with the open ended, does he wanna play? No, he lays it down. I do like the fold. He wasn't getting the right price, but he does have the option of leading out himself there. Wonder Cam came up with a 10, so... Wow. So if Gia gets to the river, he spikes the case 10 and has a very easy decision if he faces another bet. It's tough to play against pros. They take pots when they don't deserve it. Matt Parry just doing that. The Andes are now 15,000. Blinds 50 and 100. 
Greg Weber, not going to play. Thomas Paul with the king, queen of clubs. He is going to raise with it. Josephy out. Goo, who's out. And now Matt Perry with a queen. Jack has a decision. This is right on the cutoff of playability in the small blind, and I'm curious as to how Matt approaches it. Matt has raised it up. Gee, it goes out. And Thomas certainly not going anywhere with king-queen suited. That is not a folding hand preflop. So here we go. With a flop, it's an ace-jack seven. Well, Matt's bet. And I like that Matt is so relentlessly aggressive out of the small blind and with his chip lead. It puts everybody else in the final table in an awkward position where they're constantly forced to play big pots that could put their stack and tournament life at risk. Thomas calling, though, hoping to hit a straight, but nothing materializing there with a four on the turn. Matt used a, a down bet, which means reducing the sizing he made preflop on the flop. He made it seven and a quarter preflop. He bet about four and a quarter on the flop. Thomas hit nothing, says, I don't care. I'm going to bet it, 625. Matt with a pretty quick call, though, to the discomfort of Thomas. Four on the river changes nothing. Hmm, interesting. Matt knows if his opponent peeled the flop with a gut shot like a king, queen, a queen 10, 9, 10, 9, 8, it's all missed by the river. Oh, boy. Look at this. Thomas is going to go for it, though. He says, I don't care. I got nothing. King high, but I'm going to bet close to 1.5 million. He's going to put the pressure on Matt. And look, Thomas knows he can't win by checking. So I really do like this bet because he's representing all of the strong hands. He can have any ace. He can have pocket sevens, pocket jacks. The only thing I would say he probably can't have is pocket aces, which is still possible. Some people slow play those preflop. One four fifty. This would be a heck of a call if he could do it. There you see a time bank chip comes into play, is used automatically by Matt, and that gives him another 30 seconds, and he's going to need it to think this one through. He's getting a pretty good price on this river, over 3 to 1, but he's also questioning whether his opponent can really be bluffing that frequently. And look at the time clock ticking down again. And that's Thomas Paul's fiance, Jen. Now that will be a second time chip coming into play for Matt. They are used automatically, so your hand is not declared dead just if the action clock runs out. And the clock is ticking down once again. He's going to fold it. Yeah, I can't blame him for that one. Thomas gets away with it. Matt loses the hand and two time bonuses. There you go. His fiance Jen excited. Well, Greg Weber, our new chip leader, he's edging out Matt Perry, who lost some chips before the break. And Goo in sixth place, a little under $4 million. Action on the firefighter, the chip leader, Greg Weber. And he's got an insignificant hand. Folds the hand. Thomas also out. Cliff out. Goo not wanting to play. And around to Matt Perry. Ace five. How much to start with? Uh, I just can't. Is there like a. Yeah, it's a, about like five, six, five, five. It's always so yeah. awkward in that seat. Can't tell what's going on across the table. I don't blame Matt for trying to clarify, but look, I appreciate that he wants to get the stack sizes right. That tells me that he is thinking about those things in his decision making. Well, he's made it 325 into Gia. Look, oh, Gia has picked up tens again. And this is a great opportunity. I like Gia's previous flat with pocket tens against Matt because of the positions involved, but now blind versus blind, he has an awesome opportunity to three bet and get some money in here. He does not. Okay, I don't get it. On the flop's at ace, nine, five, and now he's wishing he could have pushed him out because Matt Parry hitting aces. 
And there's the continuation bet, 375. And this is gonna get awkward for Gia because you have to start questioning how many bets am I willing to call with the ace over card out there. And he does have a backdoor flush draw to the 10, but as we know, that would be beaten by Matt's ace of diamonds if it were to come through. A nine on the turn. And that is not the card Matt wanted to see. Matt's gonna check. Not a bad card for Gia though, and you see him betting both to get value and to protect his hand from, you know, random three and six outers. She's starting to think he's in front, perhaps. And he makes a bet of 400. River card is a six, doesn't help Gia. Matt's gonna check to him again. Gia checks it back, and so Matt, who had lost the chip lead, prior to this hand is now going to regain it, taking some chips from Gia there. A bit of a missed opportunity by Gia to three bet free flop and create an aggressive dynamic with Matt. He was certainly making those kind of plays earlier. We saw him four bet ace three suited, but for whatever reason, he has changed his approach. Flies are up to 6120 with a 20,000 ante. And Gia now with a king queen will raise to 260 to go. And behind him, Greg has an 8-7 suited, which in these situations you can play as a call or a three bet, as long as you don't fold. He will just call it. And everybody else going out. Let's see if Goo also goes out. Low 4-5 gets out of the way, so. We got king queen versus eight seven of hearts and the flop is a king ten three beautiful flop for Gia Lu. yeah he checks it right over to greg who does not take the bait as a bluff and ooh, that eight on the turn is going to cost greg some chips he's just picked up eights now and now gia bets the kings three ten So Greg is not about to fold a pair here to one bet. As you see him continue, the real decision will be on the river. Five of diamonds, Gia looking solid here. 800. That is a great card for Gia because now his opponent can tell himself, well, if Gia had any of the prominent draws of jack nine, spades, nine seven, whatever, they've all missed on the five of diamonds. So if he was bluffing the turn, he's still bluffing this river, but if you think your opponent is likely to check a king or a 10 and then bet twice, you've got a very awkward decision here. Action clock ticking down to seven seconds. A time bank chip is gonna come into play. And he's gonna make this call. He is gonna get burned. Listen. Thanks. Well, that flop check from Gia turned out great for him. If he just bets the flop hand over, checking allowed him to get two streets of value from Greg. We're giving away $600,000. There's no better value in the month of March than tournaments on WPT Global. We're doing a 100% rake back promotion where all tournament rake will go into three tiers of free rolls with increasingly bigger rewards. Qualify when you play and spend money in MTTs from March 4th to March 31st. Want some extra help? Deposit using the promo code YT52 and get our welcome bonus with Deposit Match. All right, let's get back to this action right here. Cliff Josephy will lay that down. And now Goo looks at a King Jack. And we haven't seen a lot out of Goo from this final table, so he's still a question mark. And I don't know what kind of uh, tendencies or patterns to expect from him, but he is gonna raise up this King Jack. Chinese restaurant owner in Jersey, trying to take down this pot with King Jack. And only one to beat now is Thomas Paul, who has a 7-9 in the big blind, but it's suited. Very nice hand to take a flop with out of the big blind. I call. All right, he's gonna stay involved, make the call. And the flop is at a seven three, so Thomas out flopping Goo. Gonna check. Yeah, it's a nice flop for Thomas. It's a pretty easy call when your opponent bets on this kind of texture. Yeah, Goo will make the continuation bet. 
275. The decision street on this hand, really for both players, is going to be the turn. I don't know whether Gu is the kind of guy who fires a double barrel, and here you see he's turned no equity. He doesn't have anything besides king high. So is he the kind of guy that keeps up a bluff here, or is he the kind of guy who, whenever he doesn't have a strong hand or a big draw, just checks it down and tries to get to a showdown? I don't know, and I doubt Thomas does either. And you see the action clock ticking away there. One tell you see from inexperienced players is they act quickly when they're certain of their decision and they take longer when they're uncertain of their decision. So you see Goo here, not exactly sure whether he wants to bet, but he is gonna fire here 650,000 and this time it's probably gonna work for him. I mean, that is a tough bet for Thomas to continue with. Thomas wondering, does this guy really have an ace? That's a big bet, and Goo puts the hot sauce in his face. Gonna take down that pot, beautifully done, and shows it. Shows the hand. Oh, Goo opens up the fortune cookie, which says, I just bluffed you, sucker. Couple folds into Thomas Paul. He's on the cutoff with Queen Jack suited. And I like the way Thomas is playing tonight. Very selective. And he is going to raise to 275. Cliff goes out. Goo. Oh, wow. Look at that squeeze. Beautiful pair of kings. Let's go, Goo. Well, this is going to be trouble for Thomas because Queen Jack suited is not a hand you fold very often pre-flop, especially against one opponent that plays very well post-flop. So Goo going to 3-bet to 860,000. Matt goes out. And I would expect Thomas to call in position and take a flop. Oh no, Thomas has just put Goo all in. This is gonna be a disaster. I'm on it. And that's a quick call. Goo has been pretty snug pre-flop at this final table. He really seems like the wrong guy to make this move against. That's not good. It's the same hand than Blackjack. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> remains smiling though, hopeful. Anything could happen. Right now, Goo has all his chips, and Thomas would be down to about over, a little bit over a million if he should lose this pot, but we will see. Five cards to come. Here is the flop. It's an ace, eight, deuce, and that is not good for Thomas Paul. Uh, we got some serious sunglass on sunglass violence going on here. Oh, that is the card, Vince. The ten of clubs, that creates a world of possibilities. Come on. <laughs> Pay the ball. Come on, one time. Pay the ball. Any club, nine, king, and they will all be delivering this pot to Thomas. Goo, the owner of a Chinese restaurant. Pair the board, come on. He's like, pair the board. Eight of clubs, no good for you, bro. Oh, it's a three yes. of diamonds. Goo gonna take down a big one and double up, and that is gonna demolish Thomas Paul's stack. Oh, yeah. It's kind of really scary, man. Wow, studio of France, yo. 15 out from the river. That is brutal for Thomas. I mean, you just didn't have to do that, so he's not out of this tournament, but he's only gonna have about a million chips left. All right, thank you, Lynn. Matt Perry out in front at 8.6 million. He's followed by Gu Chen at 7.2, yeah, yeah. and our short stack for the moment, Thomas Paul, a little over a million, all of them competing for $789,000 up top. And he's a 20, blinds a 61-20 action on the firefighter, Greg Weber. Ace nine doesn't like it. He's going to fold it. Thomas Paul. If you want to make God laugh, make a plan. Also folding. Cliff Josephine with a king queen of hearts. Cliff is going to assemble a raise here. 270 to go. Goo folds. Matt Perry, the chip leader, goes out. And now Gia with a pair of jacks. He does cover Cliff here, so although Thomas is really short and at risk of going out, 
Gia doesn't need to worry about getting eliminated by Cliff, so I'm a little surprised he just called preflop, but either way. Flop is a 9-8-3. Gia looking good, but he's gonna check it. Cliff has a four flush here, though, on the flop. That's 300. You know, again, in Gia's shoes here, it's close between calling and raising. And he is just gonna call it. Three, here's the board. Awesome card for Gia, and one of those cards he should maybe lead out on, because your opponent is gonna check back in position so frequently. Well, he checks, hoping to hit a card on the river, not to be a deuce of diamonds. So Gia's out in front. Gia certainly value betting now. Cliff flopped huge, but got to the river with nothing besides king high. And he appears to be thinking about this. Uh, wow! Jack's up. Cliff Jack's makes the up. call with King High, so I guess he felt Gia could have Jack 10, 10, 7, 7, 6 often enough that he should call there, but that seems optimistic to me, Vince. Went for the hero call, it backfired. So Cliff Joseph, he pays off Gia in a big way. Gia looking good. There's a Dr. Pepper bar. Well, Jeannie and our friend Tom Wheaton hanging out there enjoying some Dr. Pepper and the view of the final table. Thomas Paul, used to be in the finance business, now playing a lot of poker, goes out. Cliff going to take a breather, licking his wounds after that last debacle. And now Gu, who has a Chinese restaurant in Jersey, is going to raise to 250. Matt. Three bets the button. We've seen Matt do a lot of three betting at this final table, and that's not only a result of his playing style, but his chip lead. And now, Gu. Nice. Everyone else wants to avoid playing big pots because he can eliminate them, but they can't eliminate him. Matt taking that one down. To succeed in poker, you really have to work at it. You have to put in the hours. And the biggest thing is being mentally strong. Like, everyone goes through tough streaks in poker, and you gotta be able to get through that. I used to play chess a lot uh, when I was younger, and I've always had a thing for strategy games. And when I found poker, I was kinda like, wow. It plays to a lot of my abilities and, you know, my interests, but I can also make money at it, much more so than in chess, and it just worked out perfectly. Matt Perry, chess player, top Juvenile chess player out of Rochester, New York, now living in Vegas. I've played some cash games with Matt Perry before. He was very composed, thoughtful at the table. He's got a great, aggressive game. It's fun to make a little money at something you're good at. A game that you don't have to have the best hand. You gotta love poker. Fold. Action with goo here. The solid ace king. He will put in a raise, makes it 260 total. Matt going out, Gia gonna fold King 10. Firefighter going away, and now Thomas Paul. Trying to finish me off. Thomas, very much our short stack with about a million in chips to start this hand. So he has under 10 blinds, and typically when you're that short in the big blind. 260. You're calling a small raise with almost everything, looking to catch a piece and then get your money in. He's made the call, hoping to get lucky. Let's take a look at the flop. He does get lucky. Seven, four, deuce on the flop. He's got sevens. Yeah, and that's as good as it gets for Thomas. How much will be hung? I have seven of these time chips. Goo here. I'm on it. Yeah, he's just gonna put them all in. Thomas with the quick call. So this hand is essentially playing itself. Queen sailing, huh? My say. Sevens out in front. Thomas Paul with a big opportunity to double up. Club's no good. Clubs. I see it's coming. I feel coming. Thomas. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at Hunga, okay. He's like, all right, well, if you say so, I'll just gather up my things, take my glasses off. Not gonna need this hat anymore. Jack of spades on the turn, oh, didn't come then. Oh, yes, yeah, those mail right. base cards, they're not what we want to see. Thomas looking good. 
Down to the river, Kid Thomas double up. Big favorite to do so. One more card to dodge. There's Jen, his fiance, sweating it out. Oh, no! A king! I told you I'm coming. It is gonna knock out Thomas. And just like that, we lose Thomas in sixth place in dramatic fashion. Uh, nice playing, buddy. Two knocks out the first player of this final table and improves his position. Thomas Paul out of here in sixth place. The former fund manager has to say goodnight. And right now, our first casualty, over to talk to Matt Savage. Thomas, tough way to go out there on that river card, but tell oh, us about your experience oh. this week. Oh, I had a great week. I mean, five straight days of poker, it's a little grinding, but uh, I came in in a really good place today. I had a what I thought was a pretty solid plan of waiting for one of the two guys on my left to three-bet me light and shove on them, and that didn't work. Well, an amazing run this week, and uh, yeah, great patience. players. I mean, I, I don't know. I had a great time. All right. I had a great time. Well, thank you. Well done. Yeah. Right. We go down to the money pit. Matt Perry, the chip leader from Rochester, New York, originally. Former chess player has a strong ace queen of hearts. And Matt has played great throughout this final table. He's really used his stack size well to apply pressure on his opponent's pre-flop. Now he has a premium hand, and Greg Weber in position here also has a premium King Jack suited. He does call Cliff going out. Goo not interested, so. Ace Queen versus King Jack, here we go. And the flop is a Queen 10 5, beautiful for Parry, but open ended for Greg. Matt's bet 475. Greg, open ended, overcard, backdoor flush draw, not going anywhere, of course. Firefighter makes the call. Going to the turn, can he get there? No, not there. Deuce of clubs. It's a nice card for Matt. It's very safe for him, but also adds some draws to the board. So when he barrels here, now his opponent can tell himself, well, there are more bluffs that my opponent can have in his range, and that allows Matt to get value more frequently with top pair, top kicker. Yeah, well, he's gonna make him pay. And the firefighter now involved with a big pot. He'll make this call. And have to get lucky on the river. Let's take a look. Oh, when he does so, an ace hits. He's hit his straight. Beautifully done. And Matt has two pair now, aces and queens, and he's going to check. And that's an intriguing card because it completes the most obvious flop draw, King Jack, and it completes the backdoor flush draw. So Matt has checked over to Greg. I don't expect expect him to get away facing a bet, but I also know he won't be happy facing a bet, even though his hand is improved. God, I hate that river. That's a 2.4 million bet by the firefighter. And there you see Matt struggling with his trucker hat, knowing that something is very wrong here, despite the fact that he is rivered top two pair. The action clock will expire, so a time bank chip comes into play. This should be a heck of a laydown. Wow, wow, he's gonna do it! Great fold. That's a disrespectful fold. I mean, Matt really telling Greg, I don't think you have enough bluffs here to make top two pair a call. Good river. Yeah. <laughs> And Greg tells him, like the last card, but you never know. Guy didn't show it. Makes you think. Wow. Nicely played all around. Well, however tonight finishes for Matt Perry, he is going to feel really good when he watches these episodes and sees him making these great plays. Ooh, this hand with a pair of sevens has raised. And now Matt Perry with a strong ace jack. He will make this call. Sorry. <laughs> and I think part of the reason you see him opt to just call here instead of three bet, as he has done so many times, is now he is not the chip leader. Goo actually has more than him, could knock him out of this tournament if he were to four bet and they played a big pot. Oh, Greg Weber with an ace 10. 250. He's got some money in there. 
Yeah, Greg has a choice here between squeezing as a three bet, a sends a pretty good hand to do that with, or just calling and he elects to call. Here's the flop, it's a queen nine deuce. Helps no one. Goo's still out in front with the sevens, but hard to know. This is a good flop for Goo if you can see everyone's cards. If you can't, it's not really a good flop for him because there's two over cards to his seven and a flush draw that he doesn't have, so. Matt sees an opportunity of a couple checks and he is gonna bet it. Nice hit. Try to muscle these guys out, it's gonna work. With just ace high. So he has lost his chip lead for the moment, but he is probably gonna fight his way back there. Greg Weber and Gu Chen now essentially in a dual control of the lead. The Annies have gone up to 25,000. Blinds are 75, 150 at the Bergata Poker Open. Five players remain. Couple folds. Gia out, and now Greg, the firefighter. Now he's got an attractive queen jack of spades. He's looking at Cliff's stack and realizes he only has about 13 blinds here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. not surprised to see this. Yeah, he just wants to muscle Cliff out. And let's take a look at Cliff's cards. We haven't seen them yet. Play online. That's a yes. All right. Ace three. Call for luck. Cliff, gonna make the call, knows he's getting a good price, and you see there why it is so powerful to get all in preflop with Queen Jack suited. He's essentially coin flipping here, even though his opponent has an ace. Queen ball. Hey. Married, has three sons, he's a family man that loves to take home the cash, and right now he's a favorite to double up, slight favorite. It's the worst having everybody rooting against you. Don't even try and lie. Please, the people are never rooting against Cliff Josephy. Let's see if Cliff gets lucky, or will it be Greg? Oh, there's a jack! It is a great flop for Greg on King Jack 9. He has a pair with a gut shot. Cliff needs some kind of running straight, an ace, or running hearts. Is another jack. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. That's actually a good card for Cliff, because he's picked up the flush heart draw, so he has eight outs going to the river to get the win here. Three of spades, Cliff not gonna do it. He is our fifth place finisher. Really well liked, well respected guy in the poker community. Gonna have to wait a little bit longer on getting a first title. Okay, Cliff will take home 199,000 and he's over to talk to Matt Savage about his defeat. Got the early double up, but yeah, that was uh, fun. <laughs> I mean, when you get in a situation like that, do you have more hope as to winning the title and the money? Or? Yeah, obviously. I mean, I was in much better shape when I when I won that. I was over four million chips, and I, w I was in good shape. And then things just didn't go my way. I probably made a couple mistakes. I made a hero call against Gia, where I was wrong. Um, I thought that he would bluff catch a lot of his value hands, and he had two jacks, which I never thought he had there. So that was a mistake. That hurt me a little bit, and uh, just. Couldn't catch a couldn't catch a heart on the end there. So. We well, moved up one spot from them. Yeah, so. <laughs> right. I mean, so that's something. He's got about seven million. He's got a king ten. Grew up in Rochester, New York. Now living in Vegas. Living the dream. Twenty six years old. Makes a raise to three twenty five. Gia with a little pair of fours will make the call. And after losing Cliff Josephy, I would say that Matt Perry is the most experienced player at this final table, and he looks like it tonight. So composed this evening. Goo with ace three of hearts. I likes to also call, so three-way action. Going to the flop it is a king, jack four, three of a kind for Gia. What a flop, and Matt Perry hitting top pair. This is bad news for Matt. Goo checks. Matt makes the continuation bet, 525. And Gia with the set. Just calling. Goo folds. Five on the turn. 1.25. 1, 1, Matt bets. I like that Gia has opted to slow play here. There's really no reason to raise the flop. And if you do, it looks incredibly strong. And you're basically saying you either have a huge hand or, you know, queen ten of spades. And Gia just slow playing the set. Makes the call, trapping beautifully. Deuce on the river, irrelevant card. Matt Perry, will you keep betting or what? 
1.35. Oh, wow. He bets 1,350,000, thinking he's making a value bet. Where's the sledgehammer going to come down? All in. There you go. All in. It's hard for Matt to get called by a jack or a worse king, but, oh, man, this is tough. Red alert, red alert. Matt has bet on all three streets. Here you can see on his face, the moment he announced all in, he felt nauseous. Matt now facing a very difficult decision on this river. What he's thinking about is that it's difficult for his opponent to be bluffing because that means he would have called twice on a draw and then ripped it in on a bluff on the river, which can happen, but is a very rare play from most opponents. Time clock down to four seconds. And once more time. It's also really hard for Gia to have a strong hand here because if he had king jack, he would likely raise either the flop or turn. If he had pocket jacks or kings, he would probably re-raise pre-flop. God, can't go rough here. He's so sick of this spot. You can see the action clock ticking away as he's contemplating his decision. Now he's going to take another time chip. Matt has used quite a number of those during this final table. And now facing one of his most difficult decisions so far. Was ace three spades? Oh, wow. Mm. Can he lay this hand down? Yes, he's going to do it. Very nicely done. Saves the last bunch of money. And that is a big pot for Gia. Flopping a set. What a disgusting decision for Matt to have to make. Used up most of his time bank chips right there. Uh, at least he's making good laydowns, but the car's just not going his way as we move on. The deck is not cooperating with Matt Perry this evening. But he's doing his best to stay in this tournament. And here, Greg Weber with a 9 7 of spades, gonna make it 325. Goo just going back over the top to 800. Matt with 10s. All in. It's all in time for Matt. And when it comes back to Goo, I don't know what to expect. I mean, he's getting a good price, but he only has a six suited, so I really don't know how he wants to approach these situations. He's gonna call, okay. Goo says, I'm here to gamble. I've got a suited ace, let's play. Matt Perry going off the rails here, getting the hands, but they're not working out. This time out in front, nice favorite with the 10s against Goo, but crazy things happen. And if Goo should get lucky, Matt would be out of here. Five cards to come, the money's all in. Here it is. Flop is a 4 3 deuce. It's good. Two cards. Yeah, that's a good but not great flop for Matt because he still needs to dodge an ace or a five. So his opponent has seven outs twice. Four pairs the board. Nice A. Don't give me that. Come on, one time. Still trying to dodge the same seven outs going to the river. Not to be as a jack hits on the river. So Matt is going to double up. We're giving away $600,000. There's no better value in the month of March than tournaments on WPT Global. We're doing a 100% rake back promotion where all tournament rake will go into three tiers of free rolls with increasingly bigger rewards. Qualify when you play and spend money in MTTs from March 4th to March 31st. Want some extra help? Deposit using the promo code YT52 and get our welcome bonus with Deposit Match. Actions on Goo. And he's going to fold this one. I like his hand selection so far at this final table. A lot of recreational players either play way too many or way too few hands. Goo has been right on the money so far tonight. Matt opening up king six here on the button, and Gia 
Making another one of those surprising and kind of confusing calls from the small blind with a premium hand. I mean, Ace Queen suited is an awesome hand, and you're facing an aggressive opponent, so you should want to get more money in the pot here. I don't really understand the call. It's an unorthodox move, and it doesn't always work, but this time it's really not going to work. As a 10 10 jack hits, making Greg three of a kind. And if I didn't like the pre-flop action, I like this flop action even less. This is just not a good flop to be leading out on. It's pretty easy for your opponents to connect and not fold. And uh, Greg, of course, with trips, not going anywhere. Matt gets out of the way at nine on the turn. So, oh yeah, he's got the memo. Yeah, that's a good card for Gia, but also not one he should expect to get many folds from Greg on. So you see him check over there, and now it's just going to be a question of pot odds once Greg bets. Yeah, Greg's going to bet a hefty 850. Now Gia's open-ended, but no, he's no moss. He's going out. One of those hands where he sort of put money in in all the wrong ways. He would be one tough guy to play at the fire station, wouldn't he? And they waiting all the time for a fire to happen. He's playing a little poker. Yeah, let's play some poker. Oh, guys, I got a duck yeah. right here. I know, we got, got some hours to kill. That's right. I got some chips. <laughs> I'm buying the beer. What a play. What a ringer at the fire station. No fear, huh? That nine doesn't scare you, huh? No one have a 10. That's a good bet. You hear the fire bell go off. You just go, wow, no. <laughs> Breaks up the game. <laughs> Not that fire thing again. Greg might be able to retire from his firefighting days if he takes down this one. There's almost $800,000 up top, so. Goo has raised, and around the horn, Gia picking up tens again. All in. And he's going to shove it all in. This time, Gia absolutely knows how to play pocket tens. Goo is our short stack, 20-something blinds on the button, raises it up, and Gia just rips it in his face. And Goo is too shallow to call a hand like Ace-3. Nice. There you go. Now he's got to lay that down. Gia being a gentleman shows the hand. Diamond Can I needle him? No, not at all. <laughs> he showed me sixes. <laughs> I got to show him. I got ace high. Ace high, no good. Greg Weber continues to pad his chip lead above 14 million now. The blinds are still 75, 150 with a 25,000 ante. Here in Lamp City at the beautiful Borgata Poker Open. Action goes to Matt Perry. He's got a pair of sevens. And he will up it to 325. Gia folds it. Greg with an uneventful 10 7. He's not going to play, so Goo now with a 9 10. Will compete. Yeah, that's a nice big blind hand. And he has out flop Matt here. So middle pair for Goo and an under pair to the king and 10 for Matt. Goo checks to him. Matt going to slow down and check two. Going to the turn. It's another king. And that's a good card for both players because now their hand strength has improved and it's made it much less likely that their opponent has the king. Goo will check over to Matt one more time, and you see Matt here sizing up a bet, trying to get some value from Goo. He very reasonably believes that he has the best hand. Now, I will say there's not a lot that Goo can call with on this turn besides a king or a 10, maybe an awkward deuce somehow from the big blind. Well, six on the river doesn't help Matt. Goo checks it. So Matt has a good hand here, but I question whether he can really be called by worse. This may be too thin. Well, he's going to bet it. And you see Goo just snaps with the 10, and Matt, already feeling a little bit dirty about making that river bet, likely realizing it was a little too thin in the end. Matt Perry perhaps misstepping there, but Goo on a nice roll right now as four players remain at the Brigada Poker Open. First time I did that. You've been right on pretty much every other time. As soon as I was throwing him, I like, saw his hand, he was like... Action on Goo. He is going to peek down at an A6. And he's going to raise 325 to go. Matt Perry not interested. Gia also folding. And the only one to beat is Greg. He's got some money in there with the 7-5.
So he will make the call and see three cards. Flop is a 7-6-2, so Greg is out. Flop, goo. Great flop for Greg. Not only does he have top pair, but his opponent has the nut second pair. And Goo is going to continue his larceny. Makes the continuation bet of 325. Greg's not going anywhere. Makes the call. Wow, an ace on the turn. Goo hitting aces. I mean, not only is that an awesome card for Goo because he improves the two pair, but it's the card he's most likely to double barrel as a bluff. So this is going to be really difficult for Greg to fold here against that bet. He is going to pay him off there on the turn. Go into the river. Can Greg get out of this? No eight of spades on the river. Greg is checked. There's about three million in the pot, which is roughly what Goo has behind here. So I'm not sure if he'll just all in or size it down a little bit, but he's going to think this one over before taking his action and Perhaps he's trying to inspire some doubt in his opponent about whether he is bluffing or value betting. The clock is ticking down. And he's going to take more time. And I think he's trying to disguise the strength of it. 2.10. 2.1 million. Yeah, if this is by design, it's some beautiful acting by Goo because he does look genuinely uncertain about what he's supposed to do. And now Greg is faced with an awkward decision. Well, the time's ticking down for him now, too. He's down to two seconds. He's going to take more time. Is that King Queen again? It's unfortunate for Greg that Goo has not really run a lot of multi street bluffs. That ace king that big? No. Aces. 2.1. And it would be a major mistake. I mean, yeah. you gotta give him some credit for something. He never stopped betting. And Goo can have any of the aces Absolutely. and still be value betting here. So it seems awful thin to make this call. Taking more time. Be a really big hero. I'm like an idiot. Oh Don't no, Don't do Greg. it, Greg, Don't no! Do it. No! And the firefighter. Getting a little smoke inhalation from that one. And goo beautifully done. All right, that's a pass out, Greg. Great move by goo right there. Hats off. Guy's in his first WP2 tournament ever, and he makes that kind of move. Yeah, very nice hand from goo there. Nothing fancy, but got maximum value, whether that was a result of his posturing on the river or the image he has at this table. Goo all of a sudden really in contention for this title. Okay, Gia now, with the button, is going to raise up 6-3 suited. Greg, looks like he got the wind knocked out of him a little bit in that last hand. He's got Queen-10 suited here in the small. And he'll make the call. I wonder if Greg's mental composure will maintain. Now, it can be tough to keep your mental fortitude when something major goes wrong like that, especially when you know you made the wrong play. Flop is a 10-7-6. So Greg out in front with the tens, Gia catching sixes. Both players check. The turn pairs the board with the seven. Now Greg with tens and sevens is going to bet 425. And Gia will make a call. Doesn't believe Greg. And a 10 on the river giving a full house to Greg Weber. Well, that counterfeit Gia's sixes. So this should be an easy fold for him on the river. Here comes Greg with a bet of 1.3 million. Uh-oh, he's looking at his chips. 3.5 million. Oh no, yeah, that's uh, that's not gonna work. A quick call by Greg. Mm -hmm. Wow. And he will take the hand down. You know, it's just one of those hands. You think your guy isn't that strong. You could take it away from him. At that time, backfires for Gia Lu.
smiles as he mucks a bad hand. And now Greg, our chip leader with the king deuce of hearts. Raising it up here to three and a quarter. Goo is out. And Matt with 8-3 of spades here in the big blind. Now, you heard Phil Helmuth talk about a lot of players these days defend their big blind with almost anything. Matt is definitely of that type of thinking. However, he will also balance his three bets from the big blind by using some very weak suited hands. And he's clearly selected 8-3 suited as one of them. So he uses that as a bluff and forces Greg on the button to fold his king-do suited. So nice hand. And there's Matt's parents. Matt's only 26 years old, lives in Vegas, and he's a former chess protege. A lot of former chess protégés have converted to poker over the years. One of my best friends in poker is Dan Smith, and he was a chess protege in his teens. WPT champion now from our event at the Bellagio. At 100, 200,000 blinds, Gu has a jack nine of spades and is going to make it 425,000 over to Matt. And Matt is reaching for raising chips. Now, Vince, I've talked about how much I've liked Matt's strategy of three betting frequently pre-flop. This is the first time at the final table I really don't like it. He has picked a complete garbage hand to do it with, and he really doesn't need to use hands this bad on the button. And he's done it against Goo, who has been kind of sticky so far. Well, he's only got Jack High. Doesn't have to make this call. And most players in Goo's position prefer to call. Sometimes people fold or four bet. Often we see a call, and that's what Goo elects to do here. So we'll go to a flop. 10 7 versus Jack 9. The flop is a queen, queen 3. But two of them are spades, so a great flop for Goo. Not a bad flop for Matt if he wants to try and bluff his opponent, but we know that Goo has spades here. Wise enough to slow down. There's another spade, so there you go. Now what, Goo? Oh, I love this check from Goo. I love it. You got to dig the hole, put the twigs and the branches over it, and wait for the sucker to fall in. Well, trap set. Boom. 950, he has bet. Come on, eh? There you go. All in, and Matt sees the light, folds his hand. Goo looking good. The sunglassed assassin just takes it down. We're giving away $600,000. There's no better value in the month of March than tournaments on WPT Global. We're doing a 100% rake back promotion where all tournament rake will go into three tiers of free rolls with increasingly bigger rewards. Qualify when you play and spend money in MTTs from March 4th to March 31st. Want some extra help? Deposit using the promo code YT52 and get our welcome bonus with Deposit Match. All right, thank you, Lynn. As you can see, Greg Weber out in front at 13.7 million, Gu Chen at 12, Gia Liu at 4.4, .4, and Matt Perry rounding out the field at 3.6. They're playing for 789,000, including a seat in our season-ending tournament of champions. The antis are 25,000, the blinds are one and 200 at this point, and Greg Weber, the firefighter, playing so gallantly here this evening. Gonna bump it up to 425 to go. Goo behind him with a pair of fives makes this call. Goo in position here. Definitely going to take a flop with his pair. Matt Parry out. Gia in the big blind also wants to come along with ace-8 offsuit. So we have a three-way flop of 10-6-3 rainbow. Actually a pretty good flop for Goo's fives. Gia checks. Greg going to fire out 675,000. And Goo, with his pair of fives, going to let this one go. Gia has no way to continue and also folds, so Greg's continuation bet there is going to work for him. Takes it down with nothing. I'm, I'm very competitive, but I played sports my whole life. I actually went to Rutgers for sports management, so I wasn't on the firefighter path. But uh, my dad and both my uncles are firemen, so they kept pushing me to take the test. 
I mean, people have a bunch of different views of how it actually is. Like you see like Chicago fire on TV. It's not that intense. Um, when there is a fire, you actually gotta do, it, it's tough work. You gotta go in there and really give it your all and try to help people out. But um, I wouldn't, you know, trade my job for the world. Even before I started firefighting, I was playing poker. So I was kind of accustomed to taking chances and, um, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone. So they definitely do go hand in hand, taking risks and firefighting and poker. Wow, what a hero, Greg Weber, and a family of firefighters, and now playing great poker here tonight at the Brigada Poker Open. He should be very proud, but let's go to the felt. It's on goo. Quick fold by him, Matt Parry, who came into this final table as the chip leader, and now he's struggling. He's limping this button, which is a first from him at this final table, but I like that he's mixing in the play at this stack size. Chulu with Jack-9 makes the call. Greg checks in the big blind with a four deuce. And we see a flop of jack, eight, five, two clubs. So great flop for Matt, a problematic flop for Gia. And I'm very surprised to see Matt check back on that flop. We all check a three on the turn now. That three does give Greg an open ender to his four deuce. Greg's coming out with a bet of 375. Matt Perry quickly calling. And now Gia has an awkward decision. He's got top pair, but he's concerned that it might not be good in this three-way pot. But if it is good, his opponents probably have a lot of outs going to the river. So what's he gonna do? And you can see the uncertainty in his face. I got so many. Whatever he does now, it's gonna be hard to convince his opponents he has a truly good hand. Clock's ticking down, see so once more time. Gia's poker face nowhere to be found in the room. 1.2. Oh no, is this raise for value? Is this a bluff? What is this? Well, I think he thinks he's in front. The check by Matt on the flop. Greg's gonna go out. Now Matt, who has a better kicker with the jacks. Hold on. He's gonna push it. Matt Perry has decided, I don't know exactly what's happening here, but there is a lot of draws that you could be on, and my hand's too good to fold, so let's go. Pocket aces, huh? Kings. Nice hand. G is gonna lay it down. Oh, man. That was a problematic hand for G. Hold the jack. Believe that? Good draw. I had a straight draw. Ace of hearts on the river would have completed Greg straight. I was going to get there. I had the best hand. I did not want to get all called, though. Pull there, Jack. Pull there, Jack. And that look from Matt pretty much encompasses how I felt about it. Folded a Jack, boom, eyebrows straight to the top of the forehead. Greg still out in front being chased by Goo. Matt Perry moving up a little, and Gia Lu, our short stack about two million. Greg Weber now with a king 10, and he will make it 425 to go. Goo gonna take a breather. Matt also taking a rest. And Gia looks at, oh, a beautiful ace king. Well, this one Gia knows how to play. Helen. Yeah, he's on the short stack. He's gonna push it all in. And this is actually pretty close for Greg because he's getting an excellent price and he does have two Broadway cards. So whenever you're getting close to two to one and you've got a couple of Broadway cards in a spot where your opponent can be all in with a lot of hands, it's pretty tempting to call. And Greg does make this call. Listen. He's gonna be behind, but I don't think that's a call that uh, should be faulted. Not faulted, but he is a big dog at this point. A chance of doubling up Gia Lu or knocking out Gia Lu. Love to see a 10 on the flop, but here we go. It's a queen, eight, seven, and there's two diamonds. Diamonds. Covered. That's a pretty safe flop for Gia. Doesn't need to worry about the backdoor flush draw, just uh, running straight to the nine and a six. Ooh. Six, yeah, so now Greg has a shot at a straight here. Paint, no paint. Paint, deuce, six. So now any nine, any 10, and Greg will hit it. Otherwise, Gia gonna double up here. The four hearts safe for Jia Lu. 
He will take down that one. Oh, play so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. is married. He has a three-year-old daughter. Another one on the way. So stupid. I have King 10. Like, this is right on the borderline. No, you have yeah, four and you get committed. Yeah, I think I have to call. Gia, now with the double up, is going to try and recover, recompose himself, and make a run at this title. Play goes to Goo. Fold by him. Matt with a strong ace queen of diamonds. And Matt has started this hand with 26 blinds. So this is a really powerful hand in the button at that stack depth. Makes it 450 to go. Greg picks up ace king at the best time. Total disaster for Matt. A little over five to start the hand. Yeah, like 5.2. Because Greg is almost certainly going to pump it up here. And it's essentially unavoidable that Matt gets the money in. He's going to make it 1.2 total, and now Matt... It's a very good sizing by Greg as well. It leaves Matt room to believe he could get a fold. On. But nope, it's a shove and a call. Matt all in with three outs and a flush draw if he could make that happen. But Greg here, the big favorite to score the elimination. Matt Perry. A dog, 26 years old, grew up in Rochester, New York, now living in Vegas, in a lot of trouble. He'd like to hit a queen here, but no, a king hits on the flop. Kings hit Greg. That's as good as it gets for Greg. Matt way behind. And here comes the turn card. It's a six of spades, and that's going to do it. Yeah, that's it. You're playing, man. You're really tough. Well, Matt Perry came into this final table as our chip leader and played an excellent game throughout. That was a big one. We needed that one. Really had some big pots go against him and fortunately finishes in fourth place. Yeah, the firefighter douses Matt Perry out of there. He'll take home 240000 He's over to talk to Matt Savage. Matt, you came in as a chip leader tonight. What went wrong? I mean, at the end, that was basically a cooler. Uh, I can't get away from the ace-queen. I just, uh, yeah, I just couldn't get much going, didn't flop many pairs at all. Um, overall, I'm happy with my play. It was, right. it was a blast, but yeah. Well, congratulations on your deep run. I'm sure you'll be back. Thanks. Three non-professional players going after a major title. Yeah, I just love the attitude of Goo. First time ever playing a WPT event. For a guy who's really not that experienced in these settings, he's holding his own beautifully. Gia Lewis picked up the weapons of mass destruction, pair of aces. He's only got 20 blinds, so I guess he's limping in, hoping that Greg might just rip it in pre-flop or, you know, misstep. The flop's a king, Jack Deuce. Uh, I'm a little surprised that he's checking over to Greg. Check, check on the flop. Turn is the three. Oh, man. I really want to root for Gia, but he keeps doing stuff like this that's making it difficult. Greg gonna bet it. I assume that Gia is going to check raise now, but this whole hand has gotten so weird. There it is, 700,000. That's right, that's right. He let Greg get a little piece of it on the turn. He's got threes now. So maybe this backwards play is going to pay off nicely for him. Well, if he gets Greg to call a check raise with a pair of threes, then I take back what I said. Well, there he goes. Yes, I eat my words. Gia is a <laughs> genius. River card coming up. Will it change things? No, it's a six. So Greg doesn't get there. And Gia is the genius, my friend. Okay, and we go back to the timing tells, Vince, because before we saw him tank forever before making a raise that he wasn't really sure about with the hand of medium strength. And here we see him just immediately fire out on the river when he's dead certain that he's going to win the pot. And to an observant opponent, that can be a problem. Sometimes when you bet too fast, it's a sign of weakness. And that's what he tried to do, expose here. He's going to take more time. Now, if he gets the call for this, you've got to give it to him. Oh, it would be such an impressive way to get paid off for $1.5 For whatever reason, Greg just does not believe people on rivers. He didn't raise before the flop. He's played it very unconventionally. He's getting oh paid my off. Goodness. I take back all of my words times infinity, Vince. Listen. She is one of the greatest players I've ever seen. <laughs> he just got paid off. So much more than I ever would have with aces in that spot. Lucky, lucky. It's not how you do it, it's if you do it. And right there, Gia has taken down a big pot. He's back in action. Maybe he just knows his man, because 
Greg just could not find a fold there in a spot where there was no reason to call down that wide. All right, some strange poker, but good poker. I like it. Yeah, another nice pair for Gia here. Going up to 550. Our blinds are now one and a quarter, 250,000, so 500K is the minimum raise. Meanwhile, Greg has ace jack in the small blind. Gia has started this hand with 30 blinds, so Greg is going to three bet here to 1.5 million. It'd be an interesting decision if Gia decides to go with his eights and rip it. Uh, goo in the meantime. Yeah, what's Goo thinking about here? King eight of diamonds. Taking his time. Who has used a time bank chip and then raised before. So if you were to do it, I don't think his opponents could say confidently, well, he thought for a while, therefore he's not strong. Goo has done it. He has cold four bet bluffed the king eight suited. The only issue here with Goo's four bet is that he sized it very small. So even if Greg was just stone bluffing and had a nonsense hand, he's priced in to see a flop. Action clock ticking down on Gia now. Full. Full. All right, he'll let his eights go, so the best hand is in the muck. Greg is almost certainly concerned because Goo has not done this kind of thing very much at the final table. But he's also getting such a good price that he does complete the raise here, so he makes the call for just under another million, and we go to a flop of Queen 6-3. Helps neither player. Not much out there, pretty good bluffing flop for Goo. And I don't think he needs to bet that big, either. Greg has checked into him. 1.8 million. 1.8. Greg with the ace jack. Tough to take the heat in this one. And he is just twitching and shaking his head and finally mucking and beautifully done by Goo who shows one of his cards. Flashes in a king. No idea what's going on. I wonder if he knew which card he was going to flash or there was a chance he was just going to whip open the eight of diamonds. In seat five, Guo Lian Chen. I never played a WPT, so I just sold the tea with WPT. Because I book an open a two million guarantee, so I played never, never, never going to no final table. He's got a heart to play this game. He's super quiet, but when it comes to tough hands and tough decision, he's not scared to call. Hey, I've seen him do a few things that I would say a little out of the ordinary. So I think he's uh, definitely capable of putting people in situations and playing a little out of the box. This day tournament got to be money, so I like that. <laughs> That's a fantastic story. I mean, the, one minute he's in the kitchen, he's, he's making the pork fried rice. The next, he's playing on the World Poker Tour final table. And he's playing great out here tonight, Vince. I mean, he didn't just get lucky to find himself here. He's playing terrific, and right now, he's raised again. Yeah, 10-6 suited on the button. Absolutely merits a raise here into Greg's big blind. He's going to make the call with a 9-7 offsuit, and we'll take a flop. Ace 4-7, so Greg's going to check it. Goo going to fire out here, and Greg with the second pair. Not too likely to fold on this flop. He makes the call, and we see a four of clubs on the turn. And we said before, in spots like this, when you're the big blind, it often makes sense to lead out on the turn when the board pairs, because your opponent's going to check behind so frequently, and Goo does check behind there. So that brings us to a nine of diamonds on the river. So Greg now with nines and sevens, but still, of course, concerned that Goo could potentially have an ace. Greg going to check again. And Goo is aware that he can only win by bluffing, so it looks like he's going to size up a little bit here. And, you know, you're not going to get many sevens to fold. You're not going to get an ace to fold. Obviously not a four. But the merit to betting for Goo is that if your opponent had spades that whiffed, 
you can get that to fold, but you'd also need those spades to have whiffed and then checked you on the river, which means your opponent probably had like, you know, king or queen high spades. So there's not a lot that your opponent can have that's folding this river. Nice, solid call. Ewing, pin high. And to be honest, Vince, I think that was a pretty reasonable spot for Goo to attempt a bluff. I mean, oh, he's got to leave here. Nice save. Yeah, his opponent might call him down a lot, but hey, you're not going to win by checking. Wonderful. G is going out in the small, and now over to Greg with ace nine of clubs in the big blind, and he will make this call. Two chip leaders. And the flop is a 10-7-4 an okay flop for both players. Greg, to go with his ace high, has some backdoor draws. Goo, still in the lead here, should feel pretty good about sixes. He's gonna bet it 600,000. Greg says, I don't believe you yet. I'm calling, hoping to catch something. And yes, he does catch something. The big ace, well out in front now. Well, that is the right one to catch. They go check, check. And that'll slow Goo down. But a six of spades on the river will not slow him down. Goo makes a set. Unbelievable. What a card. Goo just so excited. Keep in mind that the river did complete the 8-9 flop straight draw and the backdoor spade flush draw. Well, Greg is getting the chips out. He is making a bet of 1.2 million. Well, Goo's not even going to raise his set. No good. And <laughs> look at this. Yeah, Greg's like, what? I'm no good? I think a raise is in order on that river, but I imagine that Greg would have got away. Oh, it's so nice. Now, it's kind of surprising. At least you take your time and think about a raise. Now, Goo does tend to act very fast in some of these spots. This time, Greg with the button has a king three. He's going up to five and a quarter. Goo with an ace four. He's uh, assembling a raise here, flicks out 1.2. Gio with queen 10 offsuit in the big blind is... Eh, he's going to fold. And look at this. Look at Goo with the head. Yeah, Goo's doing some weird stuff over here, body language-wise. And uh, I like the spot he's picked here. His sizing is a little too small out of position. Meanwhile, Greg, oh my goodness, Greg is cold four betting king three offsuit. Well, I think he saw something. I mean, Goo with the relaxed head. Sometimes you're trying to pretend like I'm, I have such a big hand, I'm very relaxed. You're not. Uh, and Goo proves it right there. Oh, and he showed him the three. Ooh, that's a little dirty, but fun. Entertaining a crowd, huh? One time. <laughs> oh, he actually showed you a bluff, too, right? He did. Well, <laughs> play, okay? <laughs> Only when it works. We're giving away $600,000. There's no better value in the month of March than tournaments on WPT Global. We're doing a 100% rake back promotion where all tournament rake will go into three tiers of free rolls with increasingly bigger rewards. Qualify when you play and spend money in MTTs from March 4th to March 31st. Want some extra help? Deposit using the promo code YT52 and get our welcome bonus with deposit match. big blind split between these three players. These guys making some moves, but starting to run out of room. Greg Weber with 16 million. Goo with about 11.5, G of 5.7, and it's up to Goo. He has a pair of eight. Makes it 6.50 to go. G right behind him with a strong ace jack of clubs. All in. He's gonna push all in. Gia here has under 20 big blinds, so his hand is playing itself. Greg has a thinker, but not a real decision here. Yeah, you see him get out of the way. And now Goo. Goo emits a little sigh, but I expect him to sigh call and not sigh fold. Three-handed poker game. I think you gotta make this call, whether you like it or not. Well, action clock ticking down. He's in pain. Okay, he's used his last extension. If he runs out of time now, his hand will be killed, and that will be true for the remainder of the final table. 
You got the eights. You don't want to double this guy up. You just work your way back. Yeah, I think you got to call this. And he does finally do it. Let's gamble. Let's get the money in there. I don't want anyone to, to call. Gia, hoping his ace jack can catch up. Good luck, buddy. Thanks, man. Gia Lou, the local, plays here all the time. Would love to get lucky with the ace jack. Ace jack nine! Gia has Gia flops top two, and now Goo is drawing to an eight or a running straight. <laughs> I've seen worse. Here comes the turn. It's a nine. I've seen, I've seen worse. So an eight, and only an eight will save this pot for Goo. Only eight, only eight. Goo looks a little disheartened, doesn't even think he can get there, and he oh does it. Three of clubs on the river. Gia doubling up. Goo essentially going to change places and stack sizes with Gia. I'm back, boys. <laughs> Goo down to third place with 4.6 million. It's on Goo. He quickly folds. Gia calling with the queen nine, and Greg. Not gonna raise with an ace four. So there you go. We're gonna see a flop. The flop is an ace, ace king. Wow. Greg flops trips. And he's gonna fire out here. Gia, not ready to fold to a min bet. He does have queen high, which is actually a pretty good hand on ace, ace king, especially when your opponent check behind out of the big blind. Oh no, it's just quads now for Greg. Wow. Gia checks. At this stage, Greg is just praying Gia has a king because it'll be really, really hard to get away if he does. I think this is a mistake by Greg pushing his man out. Okay. Nevertheless, Greg takes the hand down with his quads. Kill the hand in. I always have it. It'd be sick if you actually had a king there. No, I didn't. I know. That would be really, really sick. Even with a king out down there on the ball. Yeah. Let's hope you get in this situation. Yeah. Even with a king, I don't think I could call. That's uh, got to be the biggest lie told at this final table. No, I was just going to check full the full house to you. You know how I do. All right, Gia here with pocket sevens on the button. Very tricky play because it just called. These guys playing very deceptive poker. Craig with a king jack of clubs not going to raise. Huh. Very risk averse poker going on in this hand. Eights for Goo. Goo only has about 15 blinds here. Morning. Goo's not scared. If I'm Gia, I'm racing to get my money in here. I mean, your hand is very underrepresented when you just limp the buttons with pocket sevens. It would be an incredible fold if he were to lay it down, but he seems pretty stuck. The clock is ticking down to two seconds. What's he going to do? Take more time. That's what he's going to do. A time chip. He makes the call. Here we go. Gia does make the call. Greg is going to get out of the way. You know what? I got, I got an A again. A. Oh, my God. He had eight. Nice hand. I could have just won. I king jack of clubs. And if he could have seen their hands, would have loved to call both all ins. I was I was calling. Why didn't you? I think I was. I don't know. It's close. All right, let's see the flop. Seven from heaven. Flop has a all right, flop is queen eight deuce. Nice hand. That's it. That's it. Greg has nothing at risk, and yet he is the most interested in this hand. Oh, oh no, Greg, no! So, so impossible, man. Come on. <laughs> Go twist the knife. I love this guy. Boom! Body. Why? Come on, man. That's unbelievable. Quads after quads, two hands in a row. Come on, man. Who's going to take the pot down? I can't jack the clubs. Yeah, you can't call to three people. Not, not then. Yeah. I was probably going to call and lose on the river. Action on Gia, the local. He's not going to play that mess. And now Greg has a pair of fives, but he's just going to call it. And 
Goo with an ace four offsuit in the big blind is gonna make a small raise. Now we saw earlier Greg checked in the big blind when the small blind completed and he had ace four offsuit. Goo with a different approach, elects to raise. Greg makes the call and we see an eight seven three two spade flop. Doesn't help Goo. Not a bad flop for Greg, he's gonna check. Having the five of spades is nice here as well. Got the backdoor draw to spades, backdoor straight draw. And hell, your fives are probably good at this stage. Goo, reaching for his 500k chips. And it's 800,000. Goo is fortunate that he has balanced the uncertainty in his body language throughout this final table. Sometimes he takes a while and makes a raise with a big hand. Sometimes he takes a while and makes a raise with a bluff. So I don't think his opponents can read too much into that yet. Greg calls a queen on the turn. Greg gonna check again. Yeah, it helps neither player, but it's really not a card that Greg wanted to see. Goo is sizing up a bet here in a spot where a lot of players just check behind and give up. So even though he doesn't have anything and he doesn't have any outs, I like that he continues to battle for this pot and bets a card that is very unlikely to be good for his opponent. A $1.7 million bet. Greg here, showing that he's picking up on Goo's increasing aggression, makes the call. Six on the river. Okay, are we going for three barrels? He's gonna slow it down, check, give it up. Greg is gonna take down a good one. How do you call that? <laughs> Just a great call by Greg Weber. And the fireman doing the hero play, and this time it works out beautifully. Extends his chip lead. The button with Gia here. A short stack, and his queen jack is suited. All in. He's all in. He's got about 13, 14 blinds to start the hand, so not too surprised. Greg gets out, and now Goo with a... Uh-oh. Oh. He's got king, queen. Gia is dominated here, and... Uh, Count. Goo might need a minute, but I expect him to call. Goo tends to take a little longer than a professional player with some of these situations, but he almost always comes to the right conclusion, and I expect him to do the same here. <laughs> All right, I call. He is gonna call, and he's gonna look good right now. Man, he got me crushed, man. Good, man. <sighs> the call. Five million, you fall? Huh? Five million, you fall? No, nah, you don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> so Gia Lu, the local, he's 31 years old. Come on, run good. <laughs> Married with a three-year-old daughter. Jack seven dudes. See the fluff, please. Can Gia hit a jack? No, eight, six, four on the fluff. That's great for Goo. Pretty good looking flop for Goo. No backdoor draws for Gia besides 9-10. Come in the turn, can he hit that jack? No, it's a seven. Five? Ah. Gia looking for a five. Come on, why come in? To score the chop or a jack for the win. Otherwise, he is walking out of here in third place. Goo, a big favor to knock out Gia. Can it happen? It's going to happen, and nine of them is on the river. And that will be all for Gia Lu. Great run tonight comes up a little short. Damn. Gia Lu. Ah. Many gears, going to take home 288,000. And he's talking about Savage. Gia, lots of ups and downs tonight. Uh, did you stay focused? Uh, are you proud of the way you played? Uh, tonight, I was really focused, but... Uh, Cards just didn't come my way. Played the best I can. Struggle a lot. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. All right, thank you. Great finish. All right. Greg Weber, the firefighter, out in front with 24 million. Gu Chen with 9.3. Plaza two and four. Here we go. Action on Greg. He's got queen, seven of diamonds. So this isn't a terribly deep stack heads up match, but they're deep enough to play some real poker here. Well, Greg's raise made it a million, and Goo is going to stick around with 9-8 to see the flop. Here it comes, and it is a 9-8-3, two pair for Goo. Now, Goo has checked the two pair. And 
Greg doesn't have much here, but he's going to take a little stab at it. And Goo with the slow play. Just going to call. Three of diamonds on the turn. We've talked a lot about leading out when the board pairs and you're calling in the big blind. And Goo chooses to follow my advice there, although this is a slightly unusual spot. And wow, Greg calls with just queen high on the turn, huh? Last card is an ace. And that's a bad card for Goo. It's pretty reasonable that Greg would call the turn with ace high. And that'll slow Goo down. Fall in. Oh, wow, Greg has just bluffed all in. Well, look, if you're going to get to this river and then you get the perfect card to bluff, bluff it, man. I love this from Greg. And look, Goo has no time bank chips left. So if he runs out of his 30 seconds here, that's it. His hand is dead. He needs to figure out this puzzle in 10 seconds. Oh, Goo, what are you going to do? Call. Oh, he did it just in time. Call. He has made the call, and Greg is stunned. Greg was a second away from getting away with robbery. And instead, Goo is going to take over the chip lead. Get in here, no loss. Here. Okay, so as you can see, Gu Chen, 23 million, Greg Weber, 10.6. These two have essentially flip-flopped in chip positions. On to Greg, he is still taken aback. This time he's got a little suited connector, four three of hearts. And he will make it a million. Gu calls the jack five of clubs. And he gets the jack five. Get out of here. Just two pair every board. I mean, this is a good flop for Greg, too. He's got bottom pair and backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. Check, check. Going to the turn is six of diamonds. That's a pretty good turn for Greg now. Open ender to go with his bottom pair. And Goo bets big. I like this. Flop jacks and fives, and now he's betting 1.6 million. Greg with just threes, but open ended. Will call. Down to the river we go, it's a four. Ooh, that could be a rough card for Greg. So Goo checks. And at this stage, Greg has got to believe he likely has the best hand. And he can be representing some, you know, missed diamond draws and whatnot. So he value bets, and I like this value bet. It's a little thin, but I do like it. And I think it's going to backfire. That's two million. And now Goo has to think, oh, did this guy get lucky with a straight? He doesn't care. He's going to see it. What was that? Three, uh, two here? Me too. I totally got it straight. Oh, boy! Shock it all there by Greg. He can't believe it. He's saying, what's going on here? I mean, just minutes ago, Greg was entering this heads-up match with all the momentum and a two-and-a-half-to-one chip lead and feeling great. And now, he's on the short stack in this heads-up match. He's going to need some magic. Greg down to about 12 blinds. Pullin. Greg is going all in. Greg's running out of time here. I call. Well, you better believe it, he'll call. Ace King he's got. Automatic call for Goo. Greg, wondering how this all unraveled so quickly. He's like, didn't I have a chip lead against this guy minutes ago? And now he's three outing for his tournament life. And now he has a shot at winning this tournament. Here's the flop. Seven, five, four, good for Goo. Greg could uh, catch a running six, eight and make a higher straight than Goo. But otherwise, he needs a nine. There's Goo's family going to the turn. Greg can't even look. It's a three on the turn. OK, so now Greg looking for a six for a chop pot, a nine for a win, or otherwise, Goo is your winner. Goo, one card away from the championship. All comes down to this. It's a queen of hearts. It's over. Gu Chen was down three to one going into heads up. Now he's our champion. Now let's hear from the firefighter. Seem pretty disappointed. Yeah, it's bittersweet. You know, unfortunate, but I mean, I want to win, but I guess I'll have to set up a second. All right. Well, well done. Thank, Thank you. Great run. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Thank you. What does it feel like to be a WPT champion at Brigada? 
Mustang. All right. Let's hear it for our champion yeah. on the World Poker Tour. Oh. Go, Chen! Yeah. All right. We're giving away $600,000. There's no better value in the month of March than tournaments on WPT Global. We're doing a 100% rake back promotion where all tournament rake will go into three tiers of free rolls with increasingly bigger rewards. Qualify when you play and spend money in MTTs from March 4th to March 31st. Want some extra help? Deposit using the promo code YT52 and get our welcome bonus with deposit match. Thanks, Lynn. Well, out in front, Sean Perry at 7.6 million, being chased by Ryan and Mike Del Vecchio. AJ around 3 million, Richard right behind him. And our short stack, Alex Foxen, just below 1 million. The Annie's are 5,000, the blinds are 20 and 40. I wish everyone luck, okay? Good luck, everyone. Good luck, buddy. Good luck, guys. It is on the chip leader to act first, Sean Perry. He looks down to a 10 4 of diamonds. Sean said, coming into this tournament, he was going to win it for six months to anybody who would listen. Now he's the chip leader at the final table. Opportunity of a lifetime. All right, he's raised with 10-4. Bunch of folds behind him. And now it's on Mike Del Vecchio. We'll make this call. Mike is in third chip position at this point. A New Yorker. Let's see what happens. And the flop's at 8-7-3. So Mike out flopping Sean Perry. Interesting flop for these two hands. Flush draw with an overcard for Sean. Second pair for Mike. I'm sure that Mike knows Sean is raising a lot of hands at this stage. I'm not sure he realizes he's raising 10-4 suited kind of hands. Sean is going to continue the bet, and he's going to get called by Dovecchio with the sevens. Going to the turn to eight pairs the board. That might slow things down. Not a great card for Sean to be barreling. Yep, he's going to check behind. Check, check, four on the river. Okay, so Sean makes a pair. And Mike going to make a nice value bet that might get paid off. I mean, there's a lot that missed here. Flush draws missed, straight draws missed. Sean might talk himself into a call. Cavalcchio would like to get the action, but doesn't. Sean Perry, nice lay down. Okay, nice pull from Sean there. Cavalcchio is from Stony Brook, New York. Must be nice to win the first hand, right? I thought you were going to try a lot harder. That's the old me. Now that you guys knew I fire a bluff, I'm not bluffing anymore, right? All right, let's talk about our wage we have for the season. Right now, tonight, I'm a little behind you, so I get the pick. And I'm going to take the two experienced players at the table, two tough players, Ryan and Mike. Well, that's cool with me, Vince. I end up getting more chips, and I got the short stack special in Alex Foxen. Very exciting for you. All right, let's get back to the table. Alex is a poker pro out of Huntington, New York. He's 26 years old, 10 WPT caches. He's going to quickly fold that, though. First time I've played with Alex, I said, were you a linebacker or a tight end? Okay. Linebacker. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was. 80. Sean Perry, the chip leader, has picked up a pair of fives, making it 80 to go. And we got a few folds. And now, Richard Kirsch getting into action here. Richard has a jack seven. Well, if Richard looks a little familiar, that's because 10 years ago, he made a WPT final table at the Mirage, where he was up against Phil Ivey and Jonathan Little. Richard is ahead, but Sean likes his pair of five, so he's going to bet out for 105. Richard check raises him here. Back into the 21-year-old. But Sean's not going anywhere, makes his call. It's a very nice check raise from Richard. Senses that he's ahead, wants to maximize his value. Turn a king helps neither player. Pretty safe card for Richard. I'm not sure if he can get more value by betting or checking, but he is elected to check. And I think against someone as aggressive as Sean, I like his choice. Wow, Sean's gonna come out with a bet. 525,000. At this stage, I can't tell if Sean thinks he's value betting or bluffing or protecting his hand. I'm not really sure. So we'll find out on the river, but Richard is called. River card is nothing, three. Very inconsequential. So if you're Richard and you think that Sean was drawing, your hand is good. All in. Wow, whoa. Okay, now I'm confident Sean is bluffing. 
I'll say it like this, Vince. If you check raise the flop and end up folding on this run out, you're doing it wrong. You either check call so you can call down against someone really aggressive, or you check raise so you don't fold on this texture. Oh, no. No, he's got to release that hand. That's a tough spot. You can avoid by just check calling the flop. If you're uncomfortable playing such a big pot there, that was unfortunate. Rick, she called me on every freaking pot I'm betting on you. I didn't want you fold. Well, I'll find out in 20 minutes if it was a good fold. You got a sick feeling or something? Oh, man. I'm going to enjoy watching Sean Perry tonight. One shot, one kill. That would be incredible. But five very talented players stand between him and victory. Yeah, quick fold by Richard Kirsch. And now Alex Foxen wakes up with a king-queen offsuit. Alex pumping it up to 90,000 here. Mike Del Vecchio right behind him with ace-10 has one of those hands. A lot of professionals prefer to three bet in these situations rather than call. Yeah, it's a little too good to fold, but not quite good enough post-flop to just call. So you see him use it as a bluff and three bet Alex. Yeah, it's yep, Sean good. Perry has to go out. Brian Tosic also not playing. AJ Chabra from Long Island originally goes out as well. So back around to Foxen. All in. He's going to wow. go over the top all in. He's going to make Delvecchio fold with that. Alex gets away with one there. Comes out clean. It's going to be one of those kind of games. Next time I play with Alex, I will not be folding to his four bets. You have the short stack bully over there. Don't give this man chips. It's too late, man. I just knew it, man. Yeah, good fold. But if I was going to raise, I was going to jam over you because I'm only going to have it when I raise against it's you. Too bad you didn't raise then. Why? Oh, you had I, had it? I'd have more chips then, probably. Ace is plus, man. That's what I'm raising. <laughs> Everyone pretending to have much better hands than they actually did. But this time, Sean has a real one. Ace, queen, first to act. The chip leader makes it 80,000 to go. Tosic out. Chabra, with a 9 to 5. Dolly Parton goes away. Richard Kirsch won't play. Foxen takes a breather. And now Mike Del Vecchio will make a call with a king jack. And by the way, doesn't Del Vecchio look a little like um, the guy from Facelift? I mean, FaceTime. Mark Zuckerberg? Facebook? Facelift. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He looks so much like him Zuckerberg, that he tweets come on. about how much people say you look like Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, wow. All right, we have gone to the turn here. Nothing happening for either player. Well, check, 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 check. And a nine on the river will put a four straight out there. So I suspect that Mike knows Sean has a lot of ace-high combinations here. And I'm curious whether he'll bluff with his king high. Looks like he's going to go for it. Four to a straight out there. Going to be a tough call with ace-high for Sean. Going to bet 120. Small pot. Will Sean make the good call? No, he's going to let that one go. So Zuckerberg, I mean, Michael Vecchio, <laughs> winning that pot. The rich get richer. You know, he's an amateur power lifter. You wouldn't guess from, you know, the black getup and everything, but there is a built man under all of that. Yeah, I like playing my big blind. It's like I'm last to act. You get to play so often, too. He gets to play so often wherever he is, though. Man, I'm getting big hands, dude. I'm getting big hands. Just getting bad flops there. Not the flop I want to see. Or the turn of the river. Yeah, Sean Perry, a lot of chit-chat. Sean Perry is the youngest man at the table, but comes from the old school thought on talking at the table. A fold, and now AJ from Long Island, now living in Hoboken, Jersey. 90,000. He's going to make it 90,000 with a king queen. Ooh, but he has run into the ace queen suited of Alex Foxen. Foxen used to work as a financial planner for three months after graduating college. Gave it up to play poker. Got in this tournament through a thousand dollar satellite. Oh man, you get in for a thousand dollars, even a min cash feels good, let alone almost two million dollars. Well, he's raised with the ace queen, making a 260 to go. Couple folds. Going back on AJ. We saw Alex Foxen shove in a similar situation here. AJ decides to make the call out of position with the king-queen, and we see a ace-king-six flop. Great flop for Alex. 
pretty bad flop for AJ here. He's gonna get sucked in for at least one bet. He bets the aces. AJ, 29 years old, poker pro for five years, making this call. Hoping to get lucky on the turn. No, jack of spades. He's gonna check again. Another nice card for Alex. He picks up the ace high flush draw. And at this point, I'm sure that Alex is considering, well, if I bet this turn, I'm gonna have to call if he goes all in. And I don't know if he'll call one more barrel with just a king. So, wow, so Alex decides to check, which I'm sure if they were deeper, he would not do. But because of his stack size, he likes to check here. Save four diamonds for Alex on the river. AJ checking again. Could it be? Value time! It's definitely value time. And it's really just a question of how much value does Alex think he can get from AJ. Yeah, how much can you milk the Holstein? I'm surprised to see him thinking this long. 495. And now he's finally bet. I wonder if he used the time extension in order to create the image that he was uncertain. Yeah. He had to know he Got was Got it, right. Tony. Reverse psychology. This is a tough spot for AJ. I really don't know what he's going to do here. People don't go bet, check, bet as a bluff that often. Oh, well, he's going to take some more time. It's AJ's first WPT cash. Can he figure this puzzle out? Oh, boy. Ouch. He's going to call it. Fox and turning over the winner. That's good. Taking that pot down. I think if Alex bets the turn, AJ gets away, but that check behind got him an extra half million. Fox and looking good at this final table as six players remain. We're coming back for more here on the World Poker Tour. And the blinds are going up to 25 and 50, Tony. Chopper and Kirsch going out. Alex Foxen with an ace seven. Picking up solid cards all night long. Alex had a great start to this final table. Going up to 115 here on the cutoff. Mike with deuces on the button will make this call. And now Sean Perry in the small blind looks down at ace nine. You know, he hasn't shied away yet. And he's not about to start. He's three betting up to 425,000. Toss it going out. Foxen can't play into Del Vecchio with a little pair of deuces. And he can't play. So Sean Perry with the power move, and the crowd loves it. And Mike needs a little better pair to make the call there, or he needs Sean to be a little deeper, but I like the fold. They all knew. That's why they folded, man. I guess I'm probably a little, could be a fan favorite. Loud, young, like to talk. Growing up in Vegas for me has been insane. Good job, good girl. Good job, Tyler. My father is Ralph Perry. He's a high stakes cash game player. He also has some success in tournaments. My father and I definitely have different personalities. First time we're able to play together. I had to impress him. <laughs> He's more of a quiet guy, doesn't express much emotion, just sits and plays cards. While me, I'm very out there, kind of aggressive. Big pots, what I love, man. Needle people. You're all over the place, man. Don't worry, you're, you get, you're gonna get my chips back anyways. I like somehow finally beat you in one pot. All I've been waiting for is to turn 21 and I found out this tournament is on my 21st birthday. Go! I knew there was no doubt in my mind that I'm winning this tournament. And I've been telling everyone, no matter where I go, I'll see you in Vegas for the five diamond. I'll be at the final table if you want. We could play heads up, but I'm winning the tournament. What confidence. Tell you one thing, I guarantee you, if you grew up in Vegas, you know about all the best buffets in town. Right? Really? Okay, so when you first came to Vegas, what did the buffet cost? Me? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're right. They were like 99 cents back then. Right, so you, you <laughs> paid them with a silver dollar. Yeah. But the buffet here at Bellagio is amazing. And people wait for an hour for that wonderful food. It's worth it. It is, it is very good. Meanwhile, Richard Kirsch here, opening 7-5 suited first to act. Gonna get himself in some trouble against the Queen Jack suited of Alex Foxen right behind him. And Alex will just call it. Another couple diamonds just folded. Vegas kid Sean Perry with a 5-3 of clubs. 
You know Sean loves to play hands when he agonizes over folding five high. And AJ in the big blind. King eight is gonna come along. Three-way action, here we go. And the flop is an ace, deuce, ten, two diamonds. That's a four flush for Fox and, and Kirsch. Hmm, action flop here. So Kirsch gonna fire out for 225. Alex will call. And AJ goes out. Yeah, this could get very ugly if a diamond appears. Let's see if it does. Nope, six on the turn. It's a spade. Like to see Richard fire a second barrel here. You obviously can't win at showdown with seven high. Your opponent can have some tens or backdoor draws that will be forced to fold, but it's gonna check instead. And Alex bets 335. So he's gonna end up paying to see the river, but not give himself a chance to win without showdown. Well, he's gotta hope a diamond doesn't show up because Foxing could destroy him. No, it's an ace pair in the board. <laughs> and that card might actually shut Alex down because he's so worried that his opponent either has an ace or a pair that's just not going to fold. He's going to check it. You win. I doubt it. You do. I have clean eye. It's good. I have diamonds also. Yeah. Yeah. That's never a good feeling. <laughs> oh. Opponent's like, oh, clean high, and you're like, yeah, it's good. Running good, no diamond came. That's Running correct. good. That's right. You're getting a little of my 21-year-old uh, -year run good in you. Sean wasn't even in the hand, and he's needling him. <laughs> How much you have now, Alex, roughly? Uh, that's a good question. I'll tell you in a second. He's like 3.3 .3 or something. A little bit more. Everything happening nice for Alex Foxen. Yeah, early run up. He came into this final table under a million in chips. Now hanging around three and a half. He's fourth on our leaderboard. It's a good start. Huh, there you go. He gets to fold here. Devecki also going out. Yeah, then quadruple and double, yeah. And now Sean Perry. Just, he's got to be enjoying this. Out of high school, just a few years back. Chip leader, money, family in the audience, on TV. What a, what a moment. Oh, um, sorry. The character, he's 7'3 at diamonds. He's going to raise it to 100. Now over to AJ with sixes in the small blind. That's a pretty good spot for him. An aggressive player raising. Caller on the button. And he is going to go to 350. Try to push these guys around. Yeah, I like this raise from AJ. He's in the small blind. He's got a pair that plays very awkwardly in these multi-way pots. He's pretty short stacked, so he just kind of went for it there. Takes it down. Sean feeling himself early. Reminiscent of that Phil Helmuthian confidence from the 89 World Series. And moments after being criticized for playing too many hands, Sean raises 8-5 offsuit first to act. Weren't you listening? AJ picks up kings. Well, maybe he'll listen to AJ Chabra. Oh, it's punishing time. Ryan made a call after Sean raised. Now action with AJ. How much does he want to make it? 450,000. Richard and Alex going out. Mike with four is going out. And now the bluffer himself, Sean Perry. Should have listened to Uncle Phil. He goes away. Ryan Tosic with a chance of calling here. Yeah, it's got to be tempting. You've got a pretty playable hand, but you're out of position and your opponent's quite short, so you're not really getting very good implied odds. I like that fold by Ryan. Good discipline. AJ taking down a pot. Man, it's like you just got a double up when freaking no one even called you. How's that a double up? Not even close to a double up. I mean, you're close, man. Like a fourth of the way <laughs> from those last two pots. Oh, I lost the 100k, too. Well, I don't include that one. Oh, well, I do. <laughs> you have me scared over here. I'm sure that's true. You believe it? I don't think you're scared. You don't think I'm scared? Why? Too cocky. Too cocky? <laughs> I haven't done anything to be cocky, man. Well, you need some self-awareness to be scared, usually. You know? That's true, of like how great you guys are. I said self-awareness. Yeah. Well, I need to be self-aware that you guys are great players, right? Not to play in yeah, pots with you guys. Think about it, for sure. Why did I even show up to work today? These guys could do the talking. All right, here we go. Now, a raise by Mike Del Vecchio with the sevens. Sean going out, and Ryan, and AJ folding as well. And Richard 
is going to make the call with a jack four. And Richard is very short here, so just looking to flop a piece and then get the money in. Flop is a queen. Seven, deuce, three of a kind for Del Vecchio. Richard catching none of that check. They go check, check. I like that check by Mike. Let the man try to catch up. Six on the turn. 250. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Yeah, see, if your opponent raises and then checks back on a really dry flop like Queen 7 Deuce Rainbow, he almost always has showdown value, so I am not a fan of this bluff by Richard. Tovecchio going to okie-dokie him with a call. Discouraging if you're Richard. 10, so Richard catching nothing. Well, he finally gets the message. He's going to check, and then Vecchio. All in. With the all in, but it's irrelevant. Richard had no interest in blasting anymore. The Vecchio going to take down a nice one. Richard Kirsch has had a terrible beginning to this final table. Came in right in the middle of the pack. He is now clearly our short stack. Just going to have to play push fold until something happens. And don't forget, 10 years ago, he was at the Mirage at a final table. Took him 10 years to get back here at a final table, but he's just not getting the cards right now. He's got to be frustrated. Yeah, not a great start for Rich, but hey, if things go wrong, you're only 10 years away from another FT. Race. Race. Sean with another nothing hand, raising it up. Sean can't get enough. He's just insatiable for playing hands right now. Colin. But Richard with the aces, the weapons of mass destruction. How much? 495. I think Sean might be priced in here. He's getting pretty good odds with a pretty bad hand, so it's going to be close. Oh, God, how bad did you open? Oh, that bad. Rich is going to take it without seeing any cards. Man, how can I be losing pots and playing good? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't really make sense. Did you expect to have such a good first level like this? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Uh, when when, when does, uh, does it stop? Doesn't. No, every roller coaster goes down, man. Can't just go straight up. Well, I, I went down at one point. I wasn't always like had a lot of chips, yeah. and then I came back. So now, see, I, I already went down. Richard Fold. <laughs> you went down too, though. You had chips, and I've then been, I've been Alex roller coastering for sure. So we're on the same page there. Yeah, yeah. bunch of folds. Around to Sean. He's got a real hand this time. And yeah, nice king queen. Race. Well, he'll raise it to 100,000. Ryan goes out. AJ with ace four. We'll look at a flop and try to beat out the chip leader. Flop is a queen, jack five. Nice flop for Sean here. Fires out another 100,000. AJ might even get sticky with ace high. He knows Sean is raising tons of hands and that it could be good, but not having a spade is frustrating for him. And he's just going to lay it down here. Sean looking good, winning another pot. And there in the audience, his family and friends and his dog, Bella. The story goes that he adopted or saved Bella from Canada, took her down to Florida, and never lost a cash session since. That's a lucky dog. I love it. I love it. I don't think you can have it on, her, on your lap, though, when you're at the table. He did earlier in the tournament. He but did? Hey. Penalty, penalty. I don't run the rules here. Mike is out. Now with Sean. Sean, another decent ace 10. I've seen some dogs in purses at the table over the year. Mike Sexton used to have that. Really? No, I'm kidding. Um, I wanted to meet Mike's dog. <laughs> All right. Raised by Sean. Tossick with a little pair of deuces will make this call. Richard, mm. Richard coming along in the big blind with 4 3 offsuit on the short stack. Why He's not? Getting frustrated or something. Maybe he'll get lucky here. No. King, seven, six. I mean, this is just it. You flop a piece and you still can't really continue. Sean going to fire out ace 10. That's a pretty nice flop for him. He's got the ace of clubs. It's a texture his opponents are going to fold on a lot. And there you see both of them lay it down. Sean going to drag that pot. Things going smoothly here. I got fans too, man. <laughs> There's Bella, Sean's dog. Best fan. Sean Perry out in front. Action. I'm going to start with Mike Del Vecchio here. Foles, and now Sean Perry, our chip leader, the Las Vegas kid, with a seductive little four or five of clubs. Race. Sean of course you do. Makes the min raise. Ryan Tosic 
and AJ both fold and Richard Kirsch with a nice 9 10 of diamonds. And Richard is really short facing a player that raises a ton of preflop, so I'd love to see him just rip it in here, but instead just makes the call. Rich, you have two 100 Ks? Yep. Awesome. Thank you, man. Boxen makes the call with 8 5 of diamonds in the big blind. Herein lies the problem with calling. Richard has some nice backdoor equity here, but he can't reasonably call another bet when he's this short. And so he's gonna end up folding what's actually the best hand to Sean Perry's five high. Well, they're both gonna go out. So Sean Perry with five high taking down another one. The crowd and the bell of the dog going crazy. A great seat for Bella, huh? And Sean Perry extends the chip lead. Action goes to him, and he looks down at a pair of queens. Oh, everything going right for this 21-year-old. Perfect image to get action. Raise. Raise. He's raised it. A few folds, and now it's on Foxen, who has a7. He likes to also fold. And Mike here, with eight two suited in the big blind, he's gonna three bet to 400,000. He's gonna turn this hand into a bluff. Recognizes that Sean is raising a ton and can't always have it, but he does this time. Bad timing. Clock going down to six seconds. Sean going up to 1.1 million, and Del Vecchio is foiled with that. And has to be kicking himself. Why did I have to try to push this young guy around? You give him an under-the-gun raise, no respect? I had a hand that I wanted to three-bet. And I had a hand I liked to the four-bet. All right, everything going good for Sean Perry, looking good, and that's what the winner's gonna get tonight. Not to mention a 15K seat to our season-ending Tournament of Champions. Beautiful Yubo watch, among many other great perks. All right, back to the table. Everyone folding. And now Foxen with Jack-10. Appears he likes it, he has the button, and he will move it to 125. Del Vecchio, though, with a king jack of spades, calling. I like that Mike just called here. You have a hand that you don't want to get blown out of pre-flop, and you create the possibility that Sean comes along with something silly. Instead, he has king-queen. Well, he's re-raised again. Alex, his jack-10 shrinking up, goes out. And were there not such a short stack in Richard Kirsch on this table, I think that Mike would make this call, but instead he's gonna fold and make sure he does not risk busting out to the one bigger stack. Wow, the Vegas kid, nothing could go wrong for him tonight. He is dominating. We're giving away $600,000. The month of March on WPT Global could be your lucky month. All of our tournaments will have 100% rake back. Play MTTs on WPT Global from March 4th to March 31st and qualify for our three-tiered free roll where all the money from Tournament Rake will go into huge free rolls for those who qualify. Get started on WPT Global and make a deposit using the promo code YT51 and get our welcome bonus with deposit match. Thanks, Lynn. Tony, let's get down to it. Sean Perry, the Vegas kid, out in front with 9.2 million in chips. Richard Kirsch, he's the short stack with about 400. Richard hanging on with eight big blinds. We are playing 25K, 50K. Alex Foxen, first to act. Fold by him, Mike Del Vecchio right here, also going team. out. And there's Sean Perry with an uneventful 10-8. Sean has been very aggressive during this final table. Race. He will raise it to 100,000. Ryan Tosic 
Been very patient early on in this final table, picking his spots. He's in a good seat with Sean raising every hand in front of him. Now over to Richard Kershaw short stack with a 9-3 offsuit is going to pay 50,000 more to go to a flop. You definitely want to see a lot of flops when you're really, really short and getting a great price, but I don't know if 9-3 offsuit is really the hand we want to do it with. Flop 8-8 eight, eight, ace, so Sean flops three of a kind. Richard unfortunately catches nothing, or fortunately. And there's a bet, and Richard can escape with only losing a little amount. Sean Perry once again winning another hand. Sean has done an excellent job of leveraging his chip lead at this final table tonight against the medium stacks. Richard being so short puts them in an awkward position of not wanting to be eliminated before him or even risk playing a big pot against Sean. Here's Mike Del Vecchio with Ace Jack has raised to 115. Got a bunch of folds. AJ going out, and now Richard Kirsch is going to shove it all in. Good luck, Rich. With a king-queen. Richard down to his last six blinds, finds a premium in king-queen, and goes with it. 295. Alex Foxen makes the call in the big blind with Jack-9 suited, and Mike just going to call. He and Alex are both medium stacks who very much want to see Richard get eliminated here, so you see that Mike does not re-raise and isolate. And the flop is an ace, queen, four. So aces for Del Vecchio. And Richard has a little piece of that with a queen. He's in bad shape. Check, check on the flop. And another queen. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yes. Richard has caught it three of a kind. <laughs> Not looking to disguise it either. Check, check. Can Richard's hand hold up? Yes, it does. Ten of diamonds on the river. Rich is going to triple up. Let's see if there's any side betting. Nope. Is there hope? I knew it. <laughs> we got a team. And Sean is celebrating Richard's win. He knows that means he gets to pick on these guys a little bit longer. I knew when you go like, Hello. you have it for sure, man. Why do you got to slow roll them like that? <laughs> Salty talk at the table. Richard Kirsch, though, is a businessman, a semi-pro player out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm taking back my uh, birthday rug again now. What? I, I you, gave, you already gave it to me. I gave it to you for one hand. Oh, all right. Not for more than one hand. Thank you for lending it out. Sean Perry here, first to act with Queen 8 offsuit. He oh, won't do it. Sorry. Yeah, surprise. He folded that one. Now over to AJ Chabra on the cutoff with Ace 10 suited. He's gonna make it 110 to go. Richard's on the button with about 18 blinds here. I'd love to see him just rip it in pre-flop and try and take it down. I do think that AJ would call, but I think he's a little shallow to be calling here, but he does want to go to a flop. Mike will make this call from the big blind with 10 deuce of clubs, and we will have a three-way flop. Well, the flop is a 9-7-4, so Richard out in front with nines. Pretty ideal flop. All in. And he's gonna go all in. Man, you know how to freaking tumble for being a short stack. That is for sure. Look at that. Getting complimented by the Las Vegas kid. Sort of. It was a fun trip to Four Bigs. I enjoyed it. What? It was a fun trip down to Four Bigs. I liked, you know, I enjoyed it for a minute. You got like six. Uh, I think I was, I had six. Yeah, I see, no biggie, right? Six is comfortable. A little rush here for Richard Kirsch. He was out here 10 years ago on the World Poker Tour at the Mirage. Finished fourth in that event. Ryan Tosic going out. AJ also going out. Tens for Richard Kirsch. He's on a roll right now, and he's made it 150. How much do you have now? Oh, my goodness. Mike. A million or a little over, I guess. With queens behind him. Richard may have run out of time. He's only got a little above 20 blinds. Going to be very hard to get away from pocket tens. Mike has pumped it up to 500K. Sean Perry, I don't know, buying some TV time. That's about it. All in. Richard goes over the top. Call. Yeah, nothing that Rich can do here. Got to go with the tens there, especially when you're the short stack. Mike makes the easy call with his queens and is in good shape to eliminate Richard in sixth place. 886 on the flop. No help for Richard. Mike Levecchio with a big opportunity to knock out Kirsch. Richard could make a straight if there was a nine and a seven. 
And there is Rich's wife. Standing, rooting, but no, an ace on the turn. Richard down to a two-outer. Big long shot to stick around. Let's see if he can pull off the miracle. No, it's a king of clubs. Nice we are going to lose Richard Kirsch in sixth place. Had to wait 10 years between his WPT final tables. Hopefully, the next one comes up a little sooner than that. And he's got $271,000 to hold him off until. I missed quite that hand, too. I meant to make it 420. Um, after the triple up, I was excited again. I was comfortable, but I still didn't have a ton of chips. So uh, when I pick up an like tens, I really have to go with it, I think. I mean, obviously, I was hoping for a lot better, but it was a great time to get here. And uh, we'll take the money and move on. AJ Chabra quickly folding his hand. Alex Fox and tough young professional. Ace five makes it 140 to go. Over to Sean Perry in the small blind with 8 9 offsuit. He has been very aggressive thus far, and he's going to continue that here. He three bets to 525,000. Tossic. Next up with a nothing hand folds back on Alex. Alex, in some ways, is the wrong guy to pick on. He likes fighting back. He's really aggressive. He's got enough chips that he can make some moves now. I'm curious what he wants to do with Ace Five suited. Ace Five suited is a hand where if you run the you know computer simulations, it often ends up being your big bluffing hand preflop. So I'm wondering if Alex is going to use it in that way. One point two. Yeah, Alex is going to go for it. He's making it 1.2 million, coming right back at Sean. Wow, Sean Perry. Oh, he's getting scolded there with his little 9-8. Has to lay it down, and there are the Fox crew. The buddies of Alex Foxen. That's my favorite card. My deuce, baby. <laughs> I think she'll be bluffing. I want a Fox hat. I had a pretty hand, too. Alex got in this tournament through a $1,000 satellite. He is on the gravy train here tonight. He worked as a financial planner for three months after graduating college. Might be the longest that anybody at this table has had a real job. What are our blinds again? Everybody in their 20s started playing poker young. Sean Perry, Vegas kid, looking very thoughtful for once. Queen 10. He'll move it up to 120 to go. Ryan Tosic going to make this call in the small blind with Jack Nine of Diamonds. AJ Chabra coming along in the big blind with 5 4 of Diamonds. So everybody with a little something here as we go to the flop. Flop is an A7 deuce. Nothing for nothing. Yeah, not much for anybody here. So if Sean continues the aggression. He might be able to take this down without a fight. He's got the button. He's got the continuation. He's got the guts. He's got the chips. AJ does have a gut shot here. And I think if there was a diamond on the flop, we could be confident that he would continue. But without it, he lets it go. Yeah, he's got the pot. And there's his dad. Seasoned professional. Plays a lot of cash games. And what's more impressive is the grandmother played in the 70s, and she was a top player back then. They're a famous poker family. Gee, Sean was probably playing in the room. Just amazing experience. The fights, the bad beats going on in that house. Full by Mike Del Vecchio. Thank you, man. Well, Sean has been in just about every pot lately. So you want to play 5-4 offsuit? No, he's going to let one go. Ryan Tosic, a tough player, happy to play tight here tonight. AJ here with King Seven in the small will complete for 30,000 more. Alex has Ace Jack in the big blind and will make it 200,000. AJ will not take a flop there, so Alex will drag it down without a confrontation. How many bullets you guys in for in this? One. You saw me when I made my only registration. What? Really? One, one. You? One. One. Yeah, in for 1K, actually. You want a Saudi, too? You're the big winner. I guess I'm in for 11K, then, or 11.4. So you're going to have the biggest return by a mile. Maybe. 
Sean in for three bullets. Everyone else around this table in for one, or in Foxen's case, a $1,000 satellite. AJ raising up at King Jack of Diamonds since the big blind of Sean. He's gonna make this call. Two-way action, and the flop is at ace-jack four, so jack's there. Yeah, nice flop. A pair of jacks with some backdoor draws goes check-check, bringing the seven of hearts on the turn. Sean picked up a gut shot here, but elected not to bluff, so check-check again. And with a four on the river, there is now a little pair out there. Sean will check one more time, and now AJ will have to bet. And of course, Sean can't call a bet on this river. He'll usually fold, but somebody like Sean may also choose to try and represent a four and check raise here, and yet you see him reaching. Sean has never come up with an aggressive idea that he didn't take action on, and he's making it 775,000. So now back to AJ, who has to ponder, does my opponent have a four, or is he just addicted to bluffing? Yeah, this is a bold move. Very creative by Sean Perry. With absolutely nothing, he has come over the top with the check raise. The problem is, AJ doesn't have that many chips to play with here, and the clock is ticking down to six seconds. What will he do? It'll be a nice, solid call, and he's going to take more time. And one problem for Sean here is his image. At this point in the final table, everyone knows he's battling for every pot. I think that if he had a tight image, this would work really often. With his current image, you see AJ considering this call. And Ooh, making yeah. this call, very nice. Sean turns it over like he had it. Always turn it over like you had it. Oh. It's, it's never worked for me in 15 years, but if you catch me bluffing, I'm gonna table the hand like I got the nuts. That doesn't help much. And Sean disappointed with himself. Back to the felt we go, Sean Perry now with a decent hand. 120. He's 10 of spades, and he will make it 120 to go. It's an unusually strong hand for Sean to be raising with. Meanwhile, AJ in the big blind has got the seven deuce of clubs, and he's going to take a flop. All right, AJ with just a seven deuce. Going to splash around, and let's see what happens. Jack nine, eight, two of them clubs. What a flop for both players. I believe I'm the best player at the table because the type of play I enforce with my aggressive style when I have chips is very, very powerful. Regardless of skill level, I'm just in the best situation, I think, to win this event. Certainly not lacking in confidence, Sean Perry, with the open-ended straight draw here. 220. Finally putting in the bed of 220, continuation. And AJ. Getting involved with the seven deuce, but now it's looking strong. You've got the four flush and a straight draw. You can see he has so many outs, he's actually the favorite in this hand at 54%. But just gonna call it going to the turn. Can he catch his club and hurt the chip leader? No, he pairs the board. Mm. That is not AJ's card, but it is one he can represent a little more plausibly than Sean. Typically, Sean's gonna check behind when he has bottom pair, although I would say of everyone at this table, he is the most likely to just bet the flop when he has a weak pair. He's gonna double barrel here, though, with his draw for half a million. AJ, thinking about this one. Doesn't slow down, and now AJ would like to draw to this flush and the straight. Gonna go to the river. It's just a matter of how, and the action clock ticks away in the corner there. He may need a time bank chip. He is gonna take more time. Wow, he's gonna check raise to 1.45 million. Leaves him about eight, nine hundred K behind. Good for 15 blinds, so he's essentially committed. Well, I can't imagine that Sean. All in. What the? Whoa. Sean is going to rip it in here. Wow. I mean, you see AJ cringe, but he has to call it off. And oh my goodness, what is this hand? I mean, AJ is all in with all these outs, and somehow Sean's actually ahead in this spot. He should never be ahead. <laughs> this is amazing. 
Let's do this again. How lucky is Sean to get his money in ahead? Value bet in. And that's what Ryan is celebrating. He thinks this is so funny. Ryan loving this. People are confused, the audience. <laughs> Look at their faces. The dog is so confused. What is happening? AJ wants to hit that card. Can he hit the club or 10? Let's see if he does it and doubles up. Yeah. It's an eight. The ace 10 is going to hold up. And Sean scores the elimination of AJ in a crazy hand. AJ Chopper out in fifth place to take home 350,000, Tony. He's over to talk to Matt Savage. What were you thinking on that last hand? Um, yeah, Sean was playing really aggressively, really loose, so uh, I just decided to play back at him. Uh, I had a hand that, you know, I thought I could look strong there. Um, I uh, made a move, and he made a great call, and I guess that was about it. We're giving away $600,000. The month of March on WPT Global could be your lucky month. All of our tournaments will have 100% rake back. Play MTTs on WPT Global from March 4th to March 31st and qualify for our three-tiered free roll where all the money from tournament rake will go into huge free rolls for those who qualify. Get started on WPT Global and make a deposit using the promo code YT51 and get our welcome bonus with deposit match. Tony, we're down to four players, and let's just analyze it. Sean Perry, a lot of chips. He's the most aggressive player at the table. You think he's just going to keep pushing it? I think he's absolutely going to keep pushing it. That has been his M.O. since we got started here tonight, and it is really working out for him so far. He is lapping the field right now. Yeah. The Vegas kid, he's got the family here, everything going for him. Only 21 years old. Very exciting. Let's go down to the felt. Takes a lot of balls to jam there. How much time do we have I don't think I had that jam in me. You don't think you had that jam in you? I don't think I'm capable of it. That was so good for TV. Man, I think I'm a pretty exciting player to watch on TV. I... <laughs> if I must say so myself. Yeah, come back next week. All right, Come Mike. back every week. <laughs> Don Vecchio with a king jack of space. Will raise this one up to 135. Sean with a 9-7. He's like, am I really gonna fold a hand? Oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, fine. His hand shakes when he has to fold, and he goes out. Ryan Tosic with the big ace queen, though, just calling. Ryan, with one of those hands, you can play as either a three bet or a call here, ops to call. And the flop is a six, four, three. Not much for anyone here. Mike slows down and checks. Ryan will check behind. King on the turn will catch up for Mike. Now as top pair. Mike, he's bet. Does Ryan want to get to this river? Yep, he'll call once. And the river card not going to help Ryan. Mike feeling confident about his top pair. Going for some more value here. 485, Ryan. It's the river. It's the river. <laughs> it's like you rivered me. <laughs> and he's got a sense of humor, too. You think I rivered you? Has anyone had a bigger score than 500K other than you? Mm, I haven't. What did you get for second last year? 1.1 1. 1 or something? 1.124. I think it's bigger this year, but just like yeah, only by a, like a fraction, yeah. It's nice to reminisce about your wins. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Being at the final table, big money ahead of you, and just reminiscing about the other wins of your life. These are the good times. Ryan opening this pot to 160 with Ace Jack. Mike will make this call with fives in the small blind. Now with Sean in the big blind holding pocket nines. Well, we know Sean likes to play for more, and he's reaching for raising chips. 6.25. And gets two folds, so the continued aggression of Sean Perry pays off yet again. Sean Perry taking that one down. Okay. You have about a little under four. Four. Three. 3.8, 3 And six. I think that Sean is calling out his opponent's stack just to remind them he has more. 
A little under six, I think. So what do you guys got? Three million, four million? Ah, uh, just ten for me. No big deal. Always smart to know how much the other players have. This is true. Sean obviously tutored by his poker-playing father and grandmother. That's a lot of schooling there. And now he's got a 9-8 with the button. He'll move it up to 120 to go. Tosic. He's got to lay that one down. And now Alex with a king seven of diamonds will make this call. So 9-8 versus king seven. Then we get a heads up flop of ace king three. Two spades and a heart. In many situations, Alex wouldn't love his hand with second pair, but against Sean, he loves this spot. You see him check call. When you go into the turn, it's a jack. Alex Foxen, he's gonna check. You see, Sean is drawing dead in this hand. He has no outs. But Sean? Doesn't have any showdown value here. He's going to keep barreling. Yeah, the bet's 325. And one problem with having his image is if you try and bluff every spot, eventually your opponents are going to catch on and start calling you down lighter. So you see Alex very confidently call on the flop and turn here with second pair. Now we get to a river that brings a four straight. And Sean is almost certainly going to bluff here. He buffs full pot, 1.3 million. And Alex, who was determined to call down his opponent, now has to reconsider because four to a straight on the board makes it much less likely that your second pair is good. Clock is ticking away. Alex is like, man, if there's one guy on this table who would try and bluff me here, it's Sean Perry. And I know he's not just betting ace rag for value for full pot, so he either has a queen or a bluff. And this guy loves to bluff. So maybe I'll put a stop to that. Maybe, or he just slink away into the night. Oh. No, he says, I'm gonna put a stop to that. Beautifully done, Alex, turning it up. Pleasantly surprised. Oof, look at Sean's face. Nice hand, Alex. And that's the first significant pot against the chip leader, and it is done by Alex Foxen, as the Fox team loves this. So far, Sean Perry has had their number. Ryan Tosic now with a pair of deuces is going to raise it. Next to act is Alex. He's got a six, and look at this re-raise. Yeah, Alex started this final table as our short stack, but he is now second in chips. Alex starting to open up his game, and he will take this one down pre-flop with a little three-bet bluff, holding a six offsuit. They're actually going pretty quick, no? Yeah, yeah, it has been. I mean, when people are shoving with seven deuce, what do you expect? It's gonna go fast. No, he never shoved no, with seven deuce. He, he called. Oh, he called. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Even quicker. As we move through this, ace three, Alex is gonna raise to 140. Sean Perry, the Las Vegas K with ace jack of hearts. Well, if I know Sean Perry, He's about the three bet. Going up to 600,000. Nice raise, Ryan has to go out. You like nine to start to have? That's weird, Sean never passes up an opportunity to talk. No, but the thing is you don't have to tell your opponent how much you got as long as you can see it. The big chips out in front. I'll get them back, don't worry guys, just give me a little time. Get the chips back. It's not in the parking lot, you know? They're like, it's cool, we'll get them in the parking lot. Yeah, go find Foxen in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. See how that works out for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just go muscle them a little, just be like, yo. Hey, I do, I'm, I am young, so. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of lessons to be learned when you're young. Yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta start right. with Foxen. <laughs> Someone's gotta do it. So I could teach you a lesson on the fell, you'll te teach me one off the fell. Okay, we'll yeah, call it even, I'll yeah. take a beating for two million. Deal. It's, it's worth it. Bunch of 20-something year olds talking about, hey, well, when you get to our age, then you'll really be wise. Ryan Tosic this time. 
going to just call with his king nine, and Alex has a chance to do something creative, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to raise with a Doyle Brunson hand. Ryan Limp re-raises him to this very weird small amount. But it's going to work. It's a little painful, right, when you're getting like eight to one. <laughs> That's why I made it small. I feel like you want it to be painful, though. I don't know if I've ever seen somebody laugh as much at the table as Ryan. I don't know if I could fold seven deuce to that size. Well, it wasn't too far off. You know what Ryan said? He says, if I win this tournament, I'm going to buy some shoes. And he wants to spoil his newborn niece. Isn't that nice? That is very nice. Of all the things you could blow your money on. And he's going to make a call here with pocket twos. Alex, about to shoot back at Sean and Ryan here. He pumps it up to 535,000 with queens and... I can't say for sure, Vince, but Sean strikes me as the kind of guy who gets into some ego wars on the table, and Alex has really been one step ahead of him so far. It would not surprise me if Sean puts a lot of money in with a silly hand, like, I don't know, 10-7 offsuit. Don't, don't say it ain't so. No, no, he is going to do exactly that. Yeah, sorry to spoil it. Ryan goes out, and Vince, you know what Alex is going to do. It's really just a question of how much will he posture before he goes all in. Is it a little posturing? Is it a lot of posturing? Is it let the action clock tick down, use one time bank chip, and then shove it in your eye? I don't know. Time bank chip coming into play here. All in. And now he'll shove it in your eye. Yep, yep, yep. And all of a sudden, Sean says, I was just kidding around. I'm out. Alex came to play, Vince. Well, I told you there was a reason he was my sleeper pick despite the short stack coming into this final table and Alex Foxen tonight showing us that he belongs here at major final tables on the World Poker Tour. Ryan first to act quickly folds. Alex with a queen nine. We'll raise this to 150. Approximately how much do you have? Um, it's like a little under seven though. And now Sean with his ace five says, how much you got? His favorite question. The two chip leaders, and he is going to re-raise 600,000 total. Your raise button is stuck, Sean. Just trying to get them all back real quick. <laughs> Ryan thinks this is all so funny. Oh, Alex has to lay that down. Too much pressure by the 21-year-old. Breaks in the pot. Sean. His pedal to the floor right now, three betting almost every hand that he enters, trying to force the action a little bit. We'll see how that works out for him. All right, we move on. Alex Foxen now with a 10 7, and he won't play that junk. Del Vecchio with a queen jack will raise to 150. Sean with 10 8 suited. He's in the small blind, so is it a call or is it a three bet? Looks like a three bet to me. Going up to 600,000. He doesn't change his game. Ryan gets out of the way. Mike has a pretty good hand here. He's got position. They're fairly deep, and he knows his opponent is three betting a lot of nonsense hands. So he's going to take a flop here in position. He's out in front with Queen Jack up against 10 8. About five more. A little over. Let's see what happens. The flop is a A6. Deuce helps neither player. Yeah, it helps neither player, but it's a pretty good flop for Sean to continue bluffing on. Just hard for his opponent to connect. If he doesn't have an ace or a pair. He's bet 450. Stuck folding. Just a thing of beauty. You have 10 high. Have you ever seen someone at a WPT final table three bet this much? It's been rare. But that's the sign of a great player. Makes something happen out of nothing and takes away your hands. Man, I guess I just need to stop playing pots with you, right? I'll hold back. That's fine. I'll let you get off easy as long as you stop three betting me. I didn't three bet you, man. I four bet you. <clears throat> or raising, so. <laughs> I haven't three bet you yet. I should be less specific. No, you've three bet me a few times. Yeah, I've, yeah, definitely. 
you just re-raised me, I was gonna come over the top and jam on you. Mm, that was a mistake on my part. Though. Yeah. Mike with the same hand in back-to-back -back spots. Mike's raised with the queen jack, and now Sean with an ace six of diamonds. Sean has three bet. Three hands in a row. Will he go for four? Yeah, he's going to make it 300. But this one is going to backfire. Oh, Ryan with the real hand. Oh, yeah. But the pair of tens, he's going to bump it up to 1.2. Ryan started this hand with about 3 million, so he's essentially committing himself with this 4-bet to 1.2 million, and Sean cannot continue. Ryan Tosic with a little punishment there on his own, taking that pot down. We're giving away $600,000. The month of March on WPT Global could be your lucky month. All of our tournaments will have 100% rake back. Play MTTs on WPT Global from March 4th to March 31st and qualify for our three-tiered free roll where all the money from tournament rake will go into huge free rolls for those who qualify. Get started on WPT Global and make a deposit using the promo code YT51 and get our welcome bonus with the Posit Match. This is definitely an action-packed four-handed table. Would you guys say so? I would. And the blinds are 30 and 60,000 with a 10,000 any. Action with Mike. 135. He'll move it to 135 to go. Sean Perry, our chip leader, looks down at a Stinking seven eight off suit. He will three bet though. <laughs> of course. What else is new? Sean has been relentless with the three bets at this final table. I'm not sure why he's making this tiny three bet with eight seven off suit. Mike will never fold to this, and it's not as though you're getting him to put in more money with a hand that's worse than yours. But all the same, we go to a flop heads up. Let's see if it works out here. A king queen six on the flop. Yeah, I do think this is going to work out because Mike has nothing on this board. And he has checked it, and Sean has got a bet. Continuation 400, and that's how you do it. His dad, a top pro, his grandmother used to play in the 70s at the poker table. It is a poker dynasty living in Vegas. Well, Mike has been waiting for an opportunity to leap all over Sean Perry at this final table, but he has not been able to make a pair or a draw in any of the big pots they've contested. And my hands are getting cold. Sean Perry is going to get out of the way. Ryan Tosic now with a king seven of clubs. And he's going to move it up to 160 to go. Mike will make this call in the big blind, holding jack nine. I need some cranberries, so I'm going to start betting 75s. Flop is a king, nine, four. Mike hitting nines. Ryan hitting kings. 175 from Ryan. And a pretty quick call from Mike. Going to the turn, and it is another nine. Three of a kind here for Del Vecchio. What an action card. It also brings Ryan a flush draw, and you can see that Mike is about to lead out here, and that's not just because he has trips. Whenever you defend in the big blind and the middle card pairs following a continuation bet, it's pretty normal for professional players to lead out because they expect their opponent to check behind so frequently. So Mike bets, Ryan calls, and boom! Flush on the river for Ryan. This one's going to cost Mike some money. 790. Oh, and Del Vecchio betting like he's still in front. 790. This is going to be a very tough spot for Mike. Because not only does he have trips, but he has the jack of clubs, which blocks many of Ryan's would-be flush combinations. Ryan has raised, makes it 1.8 total. Ugh, well, Mike is not loving this. I know he has a very strong hand, but... He's got to be very concerned that his opponent either has a flush or something like king's full, four's full. And I think that Mike is going to need an extra time being chip. Clock is ticking down to three seconds. He's got 
take more time. I believe you, but I have like the best call. Might be using a few of these. You hear Mike say, I believe you, but I have pretty much the best hand to call with. Trips with a very relevant blocker. This is an awful spot for Mike. Wow, what a great fall. You're curious, but it doesn't matter. He makes the right lay down. Ryan Tosic, though, on a nice rush right now. I feel like I'm doing something very right in this tournament, like not putting myself at risk too much. Last season, I felt like I was put into way tougher spots. There were a lot of high roller kind of players, Jake Schindler, Justin Bonomo. But in this season, the type of players, they don't put you in as tough of spots. The title is the most important it's ever been to me right now. I have no hardware. And people talk about how great I am at poker, but I gotta be able to show my niece, hey, this is what I did. Well, he's good natured, fine player. Ryan Tosic, he is coming back in a big way. Yeah. And there is Sean Perry's dad in the audience. Is he gonna scold you or tell to give you advice? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's still laughing. What do you have again? Yeah, it's sick, man. Yeah. Sean, do not three bet the nine three off. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is gonna have you dominated half the time. Alex, at least half the time. <laughs> That's the pep talk right there. <laughs> All right, the blinds are going up to forty and eighty thousand. Quick fold by Alex and Mike. Now Sean has ace-king. Okay, well, we've seen a lot of raises from Sean with nonsense hands. Now we get to watch him play a real one. Does the same thing, raises no matter what, so. Surprise, surprise, makes it 300,000. Ryan with ace-7. He's got to make that call. So ace-7 versus ace-king. Let's go to the first three. Yeah, can't fold in this spot when you're Ryan, and he makes second pair on the flop, so he'll take the lead. 9-7 deuce. Sean with the continuation bet, 225. Now here goes Ryan. He's doing these, <laughs> I'm not gonna look at the board anymore, I'm just looking at you. I'm gonna see right through you. Five of diamonds on the turn. So these are the situations where most pros slow down, and I don't know if Sean Perry will. There you go. There you go, check, check. Little surprised he's checking there. I think he could get some value by betting. The card is a six. Check. Sean checks. And now I expect him to check, but it looks like he wants to bet, so Ryan doing what I don't really expect of him, and I'm not sure this bet can get paid off very much. 675,000 is pretty big, too. And you got a chance of having your pot stolen from you by making that kind of bet. Maybe he thinks that Sean believes he'll only bet an eight, and so he can value bet thin here, but Sean just gonna fold his ace high. He won't get the action, but he'll take the win. Ryan Tosic on a rush right now. Alex was my sleeper pick coming into this final table despite coming in short and showing tonight why that's the case. Sean Perry still the chip leader with 8.3. Alex behind him with 7.2. Action's on Mike Del Vecchio. 24 year old folds it. And now Sean Perry. Pretty solid. Queen 10 of spades and the button. And there's a raise. Makes it 160 to go. Ryan gonna call with ace nine in the small. Alex will come along with seven six in the big, so three ways to this flop. And the flop is a king seven deuce, two spades. Second pair for Alex, flush draw for Sean. Also has a couple of overcards to that seven. 
Sean's going to bet this. 180. Ryan goes away. Alex with mid pair. He's not going anywhere. He makes his call. Go into the turn. Sean would like to hit a spade, but no, a seven instead, given three of a kind there for Alex. We saw Mike Del Vecchio execute the Euro lead when the turn paired the middle card. Alex Foxen says, I know that move too. Leads out for 480,000. Why would you call it a Euro lead? Explain that one. I don't know the origins of the term, but I guess Europeans were the first ones to incorporate it. Okay, very good guess. We get the picture though, but anyway, it's been called. And <laughs> we're going to the river. Can Sean catch the spade? No, it's a 10 of diamonds. Sean hits the tens. 1.45. Yeah, and this could spell serious trouble for Sean because Alex has been one step ahead of him in every big pot they've played, and I think that Sean is just looking for an opportunity to do something heroic against him. Ah, oh, seven. Sounds good. Alex picking up a good pot, and with that pot, we have a new chip leader, and that is Alex Foxen. <laughs> Nice hand. Thanks. The wheels are coming off for Sean Perry. Too much ego, not enough patience. I made a bad call with the 10. He's running like yeah. uh, Sean, you had two queens when you had the piss, the 10 7. Yeah. Queens. I'm playing good. I'm fine. I'm trying to tell him to slow down. These guys have the goods when they're betting. Don't play so sloppy and loose. Well, it's great to have the support of your dad and your family in your corner, but whether the message was received is another matter. Okay, we move on. Ryan with a pair of threes right here. Going to make it 200,000 to go. Couple folds into Sean. He's now in second chip position for the first time tonight. He's got a queen eight. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. He's going to raise with it. A call is just not good enough for this guy, so... Yeah, this is not one of the hands you want to be three-betting with a lot, especially when no one's going to fold to you. So Ryan will make this call, literally licks his lips at the prospect of playing a big pot against Sean. Flops a jack-jack-10. And that's going to give Sean an inside straight draw. Okay flop for both players. I mean, Sean does pick up some outs here. He bets really small, 475. Ryan figures, well, this guy's three betting everything. If he doesn't have a jack or a 10, I'm probably in the lead here. So he makes the call. <laughs> and keeps watching, keeps smiling. Deuce of clubs, no help for Sean. And he's got the memo now. He's going to check it. Check, check. Big ace of clubs on the river. Well, that's the kind of card you like to represent when you're the three better. The problem is Sean bluffs so much, I think that Ryan very much expects him to try to represent this card. So 1.4 million from Sean. Ryan with just a little baby two pair quickly makes that call. Wow. And that's the call of the night right there. Beautiful call. It's going to work out. Wow. And he's got Sean Perry on tilt right now. Yeah, Sean looks like a kid who got caught cheating on his homework. Jeez. Well, the whole table is taking advantage of Sean Perry. He's going off into Tiltsville. Tiltsville, population Sean. Rethinking everything now. He's looking over to the rail to his dad's coming over again, it looks like. I'm going for the head, man. Son, get over here. You gotta switch your style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Style. I gotta say, man. And you yeah. listen to me, you don't come home. <laughs> Let's see if he can turn this around. He is <laughs> off the rails here for a moment. Ugh. Okay, Alex Foxen now with ace 10, the chip leader. 180 to go. Mike on the button. 520. Going to 520. And now Sean. Mayor of Tiltsville with ace-nine suited in the small blind. He's got about three million here. 
Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Don't do it, son. Don't do it. Holland. No, he's not going to. He's going to go all in. I call. Oh, my God. Ryan behind him with Ace Jack calling. Whoa, I mean, not only is this a huge call, but he did it so quick that the other two players in the hand have to go out and assume Ryan is really strong. Sean, he will be eliminated. He's behind at this point. Look at the swagger from Ryan. Yes. The Vegas kid's stunned. Just nice call, man. Thank you. Five cards to come. Ryan, a big favorite to knock out Sean Perry. I'm freaking out here, Vince. I genuinely am. I'm freaking out over this hand. What? They give you the money. Don't you see it, King? Like they're giving you the money. Man, it's not a strong you hand. Money. Money. It's time, time to hit a, time to hit a nine, man. Hey, what time is it? You... My time. <laughs> I don't know, don't celebrate yet. Here we go with the flop. There's a nine in Jack! The nine was on the ground, but the Jack was right behind it. Pretty sick. Torture Sean Perry a little bit more. Uh, That's pretty sick, huh? Nine, was it nine in the window? Yeah. What are you trying to do to me, girl? That was more of a, like a heart attack for me than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, comparing oh, the pain. Here we go with the turn. Oh, it's a five of clubs. Oh, baby. Mikey D with the 500, Foxen with the 100, hooking it up. What a chain of events. It's just nine and then freaking Jack. Sean Perry, huge underdog. Put an ace out there so it looks pretty, yeah. Was the chip leader throughout, and now he's down to the last card. Can he pull it off? It's a five! Ryan scores the knockout of Sean, making a tremendous call pre-flop. Sean, who came in as our chip leader at the start of the final table, unfortunately unwinds during four-handed play. Sean Perry, the Vegas kid, out in fourth place to take home over 500,000. You were pretty aggressive all week. Um, you think yes. that may have gone poorly for you tonight? Well, tonight it didn't go as planned, obviously, as I came in fourth when I came in with the chip leader. But, uh, I mean, that's what happens sometimes with poker, man. Well, happy birthday to you. I'm Thank sure you you'll very be back. Much. I will definitely be back. <laughs> right, Have a nice day. Back the action. Del Vecchio. 180. With a 9-8 has raised. And Ryan quickly re-raising with a queen nine to 400. And Foxen going out. Del Vecchio will call. So queen nine versus nine eight. Let's go to the flop. Flop is a queen, queen three. Ryan has hit three of a kind. Well, he's getting out the continuation bet, and it's going to chase his man away. Did you want to do that, Ryan? I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe a chance to check there. What'd you show? Queen of hearts. Alex here, raising up the button with nine three of spades. Owen, I call. All in here by Del Vecchio with a king jack. Instant call from Ryan and the big blind holding ace queen. He has got his man all in and behind. Mutual respect between these two. Both of them have played a very strong final table, but Mike perhaps running out of time. This is huge money. Third is 750K. First over a million. Second just under 2 million. So this is a huge pot right now. When I get snap called in the big blind and then I'm live. <laughs> Rushing Ryan Tosic out in front, ace queen over King Jack. Can he knock out Del Vecchio? Eight, seven, four, no luck for Del Vecchio. The ace queen in front. Put a nine or a six or a five. How about a 10? You want 10? 10's not bad, right, it gives me a couple. Gives me a more time. Four. How about just say you want a king or a jack, Mike? And Ryan, you want a queen or an ace. Stop with the baloney. And it's a deuce, and so Mike is down to six outs on this river. Otherwise, he's going to be our third place finisher. The Vecchio has played shrewdly all night, but he's on the ropes right now. It's a 10! No help for Mike Del Vecchio. He will not be a two time WPT champion tonight. Great event for him here, though. Third place finisher. Oh, wow. He yeah, had nothing happening right there. We're giving away $600,000. The month of March on WPT Global could be your lucky month. 
All of our tournaments will have 100% rake back. Play MTTs on WPT Global from March 4th to March 31st and qualify for our three-tiered free roll where all the money from tournament rake will go into huge free rolls for those who qualify. Get started on WPT Global and make a deposit using the promo code YT51 and get our welcome bonus with deposit match. Ryan Tosic on a roll right now, out in front with 14.3 million. Alex Fox in 10 million. Blinds are 50 and 100. Nice hat. Tony, is this exciting? Yeah, very exciting and very deep stacks for this heads-up match. And my goodness, these guys are wearing each other's hats. This is adorable. Uh, I don't know what that is, but they're doing it. And let's go to the felt. A little reverse psychology for you. Yeah, right. They are staying loose. And Ryan Tosic picking up tens on the very first hand of heads-up. Makes it 400,000 to go. Alex with a pretty decent king-queen will make this call. And we see a ace, three, six, two hard flop. Alex will check and Ryan's gonna bet the tens. Bets 400. Alex sticking around with his call. Let's see if Alex gets lucky here with a king or a queen. Yes, he hits a king of hearts. So he's out in front with the kings now. He's gonna check it. Ryan will slow down, check as well, going to the river. And it's another heart, seven of hearts. This gives Alex the absolute nuts. And he's gonna check Ooh, the nuts. Nice check. Whoa, what is this? There's 1.6 million in the pot and he just bet 2.4 million. This uh, seems like a strange hand to bet one and a half times the size of the pot with. Now we know he has the 10 of hearts. Pretty good flush, of course, but up against the nuts. And if you want to study acting, just look at Alex right now. Yeah, he can't believe his luck. Time is clicking away. He's got the nuts. It's just when to snag him for as much as you can. Five point five. Boom. 5.5, there's the raise with the nuts. And Ryan suddenly regrets betting that much. Can you lay this down at this point though? You got third best flush. Well, your opponent either has the queen of hearts or a bluff. You're not really worried about the jack of hearts. This is the first one I used all tournament. Now he's gonna take time, try to figure this out. Well, if you're in Ryan's seat, you have to think you have what is essentially the second nuts here, because even though you technically have the third nuts, you know that Foxen's not gonna check raise you with the jack of hearts. Hmm. Yeah, he needs a couple more time bank extension chips in there. I've never seen somebody have such a good time in such an awkward spot. One second. There's four, five, six. There's four, five, six. <laughs> There's four, five, six, eight, nine. Jack. Do some hard to scream at. Four hearts, three bet, five hearts, three bet. There's six flops. You carry the one and... <laughs> oh no, he is gonna make this call. He's gonna hate himself in the morning. Oh man, a major setback for Ryan Tossick right away in this heads up match. Just in the 3.1, what a brilliant check to get the check raise. Wow, what a hand between these two. There you go, updated look. Alex Foxen out to a two to one lead now. Oh, just perfect cards happening now for Foxen. Perfect situations. And now, it, oh, picks up Kings just at the right time. 275 to go. Yeah, everything turning up Alex right now. Ryan gonna make this call with a seven. 
Kings versus A7. The flop is a jack, A6. Kings very safe with that flop. Well, two 15s bet, bet with the Kings. Call there by Ryan. Turn card coming up. It is a deuce of diamonds. Ryan checks. Kings staying strong, A25. And Ryan has to look at that bet with just ace high. Wow, I'm surprised he's calling this time. I expected him to peel the flop, but this turn seems optimistic. He's got to be <laughs> desperate. He's going to hit that ace. Not to be a nine of clubs on the river. Ryan can't get anything to work. Well, Alex wants more. You can't blame him. 1.75. I would be stunned if he doesn't fold this river. There we go. <laughs> All right, well, Ryan is now, that's about 7 million. Alex about 17. Here we go. Ryan Tosic this time with a pair of nines. And he has raised to 250. Alex now with a king nine. We'll make the call. Flop is a 953. Oh my goodness. Jeez, grandma's curse is what happens. Look at this cooler. Three of a kind on the flop for Ryan. And Alex with the top pair. Okay, Ryan betting 250. Alex is going to raise to 800. And Ryan right over the top. Wow, he's playing this fast. Sometimes that looks like a bluff. That's what he wants Alex to believe. We know better. What an annoying spot for Alex. It's hard to believe that if your opponent had a set, he would just three bet you on such a dry board. Time clock ticking down. Ryan hasn't made many big bluffs at this final table. Maybe that's factoring into Alex's decision, but he has about as good a hand as he can have here. He's made the call. We go to the turn. And a seven on the turn. Well, that would complete eight, six, and six, four. Yeah, Alex's gonna check it. Ryan with the three nines. One point five. Well, Ryan's gonna bet one point five. Going for the juggler. He wants some of his chips back. Alex not going anywhere. Down to the river we go. Four is not going to change anything. Alex going to check and hope the guy checks behind him. All in. Complete opposite. All in. Oof. He says I want to count. How much? I wonder if Alex can get away. This would turn everything around. If Alex should make this call, he could lay this down. He'd be saving 3.6 million. If he doesn't, Ryan Tosic will become our new chip leader once again. He is calling! Oof. Man, rough hand. See some of the frustration there in Alex. What a flip of a cap can do. He gave back the hat, and things turned around for Ryan. Beautifully done. Now he's out in front with 16 million. Alex down to 8 million. Grandma got him with the curse. Oh, that is just going to take the starch out of you there if you're Alex. Let's see if he can gather himself this time with a 9-10. Alex has made 325. Ryan, Captain Giggles once again, makes the call with Jack-9. And the flop is a 8-10-6. Jeez, action flops all around. Open-ended for Ryan. Alex hitting top pair on the flop. And he will make the bet, 275. Ryan makes a splashy call. And hope to catch it straight. Well 
out. He didn't, but it's a Jack, and that puts him out in front now with Jax. Nice turn for Ryan. It gives both players an open-ended straight draw to go along with their pairs. Alex still very much believes he's in front here. And he is going to bet it 875. Ryan Just called by Ryan. So down to the river we go. The river is the 10 on the river. Alex now taking over. Gin card for Alex here. Ryan checks it one more time. Two point eight. Full pot. And a quick call from Ryan. Sort of nod of recognition. Yeah, I thought he could have a ten, but my hand's too good. Can't really fold. And uh, I get it. That's frustrating when those spots happen, but I think that's a good call, even though it didn't work. Heads up battle for the Five Diamond World Poker Classic. These two essentially even in chips for the moment. We're playing seventy-five, one fifty with a twenty-five k ante. Tosic with a king seven has raised to 425. Alex Boxen, king nine. He is content to see the flop, makes the call. Here we go. Flop is a jack seven three. So Ryan hitting sevens. Not much there for Alex besides some backdoor draws and an overcard. 450 by Ryan. Hand seems a little too good to fold, so, oh. I'm surprised that he's check raising though. Typically, when you check raise the flop, you can make your hand on the turn. Here, Alex can only really make a draw unless I guess he turns a king, which would actually give Ryan two pairs. So, little does he know, the card he wants is a nine. Four on the turn changes nothing. Changes nothing, doesn't give Alex any additional outs, and yet he will continue. 1.6. I guess. 5-6 is part of his bluffing range on the flop, but I'm still a little perplexed by his line here. And he's been called. Okay, well, if you check raise flop and bet the turn, you gotta barrel this river card when you've got a blocker to the flush and a blocker to the 8-9 straight. 4.5. And there you go, 4.5 million. So I wasn't a big fan of the flop and turn play, but I really do like this river bet from Alex. Well, you change like the wind there. I'm a flip-flopper, Vince. That's what we would call it, yes. But it is looking good. That's a big bet, and now very tough call to make. Time bank chip. Yeah, he needs some time. Ryan, trying to think, well, did my opponent check raise me with a strong hand? If you check Maze with a draw, 5-6 got there, 8-9 got there, Hearts got there. Even a 10 will beat you. What in the? He called, he, he though. He's going to call it. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, Alex did everything he could to make Ryan fold to no avail. Ryan proves he was worthy, makes the call of the night as we move on. Ryan, the chip leader, back down to the table we go. Ryan has turned this around. Okay, Ryan is going to raise with the queen 10 to 500. Alex looks at ace 10. Oh. And he's going to shove it all in. And a quick call, of course, by Ryan. Yeah, Alex with just 14 blinds. So Ryan makes the call here with queen 10. <laughs> Gets a little shimmy uh, shake. We even, we even got the clubs blocked and the hard dominant. It hits a straight like half the time. I can't hold. Yeah. Boy, he's exuding confidence. And he's behind at this point. I've enjoyed Ryan's swagger all final table. Let's see if that comes to an end. And the flop is a king 9-3. Oh, I so... <laughs> Inside straight, he does have. You don't have a, you don't have a straight yet. You, you got extra outs, but come on, it ain't over yet. It's, it's been fun, man. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, it keeps being fun. Yeah, Alex still well out in front though of his hand. Yes. Let's take a look at the turn. It's a jack. Ryan makes a straight on the turn. Oh, now it's and now Alex is drawing to one of the three remaining queens. Otherwise, it is over, and Ryan is your winner. 
Alex needs the miracle. It's another jack. Ryan has done it. He is your winner. He finished second place last year. He's your winner this year. An unprecedented accomplishment in WPT history. A valiant effort coming back from the short stack. How happy are you with your performance this week? I definitely can't complain. You know, I, I've been up and down the whole time in this entire tournament. So to get to to get to this point has been amazing. It's been an awesome journey. Do sit, do sit. Tell us, how do you feel, Jay? How do you feel? Like two million dollars, baby. <laughs> Let's go. You're a great champion. Congratulations. Let's hear it one more time for Ryan Tosic, our champ.